It smells very good in here. Yes, it does. You know, I'm still eating the food from the last show. I'm like a wedding crasher here. This is great. <laughs> right. You're just going to stay through all the night, right? You're I'm just going to stay all night You'll last here. in the Sam show. I get booked for, like, just nights here. I'm just like, yeah, Brian will just sit here and eat food. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the program. My name is Eric <laughs> Nagel. I am your host. If you want to give us a call, 866-969-1969. We have uh, some stuff to give away. Some uh, Furious 7 extended edition Blu-rays. And uh, who knew that they were still making Tremors? Ooh, Tremors 5. Keep Tremors on 5, trembling. Still with Michael Gross. <laughs> still, he, well, you know what? That's a great role for him. Oh, what does... You, you, all right, you got me. I thought it said keep on trembling. No, it's called Bloodlines. It's bloodlines. I, <laughs> I didn't look at the rest of the front there. I really like keep on trembling. We have those to give away and uh, various other stuff. Matt OG is my co-host, Geek Stuff OG on Twitter and Instagram. He's running a little bit behind. Uh, as we've said before, with the new time change and everything, that you know Matt works a real job like a regular person, so it takes him a little bit more to uh, get into the city, and especially with the weather being what it is. I, I guess you guys are saying we're in the middle of a hurricane right now. It's like now. treacherous <laughs> conditions out there. Every yes. time you walk out, it's just, you get hit with cats. <laughs> like, just cats everywhere. Well, he's uh, he should be en route soon. I think we're going to get him on the phone in just a minute and talk to him. Giddles is here. Hey, what's up, man? Giddle Base on the Twitter and Instagram. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing Excuse pretty me. good. I'm eating fried chicken that's left over from the last show. It's delicious. I know. I, I have nothing. Here, you want one of these biscuits? There's some mac no, and I cheese. No, I'm not a biscuit fan. I There's do want to see mac and no, cheese. Here. Is, is there any chicken left? Uh, chicken? Uh, you have the rest of my piece. No. What is that one there? That's half a pie. This is oh. half Damn it. I didn't, not I know what? It's probably better that I didn't eat any of that stuff. It looks delicious, but... Oh, um, it's so good, Eric. I'm down <laughs> about 14 pounds. So You're I'm looking trying, fantastic, I'm Eric. To get, uh, the, 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 the no sugar thing is definitely helping, and... Uh, and uh, I'm going to start the workout process. How again, do you feel so. like energy wise? You feel good? Energy, I've been sleeping great. better. Yes, energy. I've been great because I don't have the part where I'm crashing he like midday here at, uh, at work or driving home when you you know you're going to you know fade off the road there and trying to do everything. You're punching yourself, drinking you know countless bottles of five hour energy just to stay awake to get home for a half an hour drive. Cranking the music, <laughs> is singing along with the window up and getting hit with the hurricane. Come on, 40s channel. Yeah, you know? <laughs> or yacht rock when that was still around. Doing kegels. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I've been doing good with uh, sans sugar and uh, falling asleep when you're supposed to fall asleep, you know, between the 8 and 9 p.m. hour when you have school the next day. Yes, that's the perfect time to Instead fall asleep. Instead of being, you know, up at 1 in the morning still trying to find, you know, Rick and Morty reruns on uh, Adult Swim or seeing if Simpsons is still on FXX. That's what I, that's what I do every night. That's or how I fall week. asleep. <clears throat> right. And then I wake up in the morning, I'm like, what did I do last night? I just, well, my the laptop is still open, there's pop-ups just going, I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> I've wasted my life. <laughs> Pretty much. So uh, there's that. Uh, we didn't introduce Lisa Correo. Hello. Welcome Hello, back. Hello. I am back. You've been out uh, on your ventures there doing stand-up comedy and such. Oh, you know. You know. Yes. And I'm back in New York, and it's really gross here. It's horrible, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not even the rain I care about. It's all the people with their dumb umbrellas. Ugh. You should be used to it. You're from Florida. Yeah. I don't walk around outside in Florida, though. Is this going to be your horse. first New York hurricane? <laughs> Uh, you know what? I was actually here for right when Sandy was coming in. Uh, I was doing a, a festival, a comedy festival, the She Devil Comedy Festival. And I did manage to get like a Roseanne flight. Bar? Like, right. Yes. Okay. Yes, it was the Roseanne Bar Comedy Festival <laughs> in New York. <laughs> no and, one else uh, saw that movie? <laughs> no. Like she no, had like a ward and a about. mustache and wore glasses. What? Yeah, She Devil. And then she made a deal with the devil to become oh! She Devil? Super sexy. I, and yes. Wound up killing her husband. I, maybe I'm Jesus. getting the plot wrong, but it was something along the line. Yes, I forgot about that. I've never heard of this. an image while Lisa finishes her story. Okay. Well, that's all there is to the story. Oh, thank you. Wait <laughs> so, I, I could add details that didn't really happen, though. So I have a question because I hate the rain because of umbrellas and I have this fear that they're always going to hit me in the eye. Sure. Uh, do you have the same problem? Because I know you're shorter. I don't I know how shorter. it affects you as opposed to like taller people. I don't know. It, it, pe I just feel people like still just, hit me with their umbrellas. They just so, still get hit? Yeah, it doesn't that matter sucks. that I'm I'm below where I should be getting hit. It's Aww. still... so. Like one time, this she drowning in puddles. Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah, I you're drown in puddles. No, no, I would no. <laughs> I just, tacky. I'm just perfectly. I just, I want to know if you get hit in the eye with umbrellas because yes, that, is the answer. That's, that's where I want to know. Because well, there's a it lot happens. of little Asian women out here too, and yeah. they also have umbrellas, and they're quite oblivious to who they're hitting. And I did have an umbrella catch my hat one day. I had like a knit hat, caught just the hat, right and yeah, it was just pulling me. 
just pulling me along. I had to go home with that person. We still live together. (laughs) (laughs) And that's how I got my roommate. And that's how they met. Nobody, uh, I, I, excuse me, I pulled up the, uh, the trailer here for She Devil. Oh, I'm so glad. Can you see it over there? (laughs) Oh, 1989. Wow. All right, hold on. Uh, let's do that. Ooh, Ed Begley Jr. Oh. First of all, you know it's old because Orion Films doesn't exist. Yeah, I was just going to say Orion (laughs) Films is gone. Ed Begley Jr., I think of. Being an environmentalist Hi, and a large. Robin Leach, and I'm here at the luxurious home of the super glamorous Robin woman, Leach, writer, Mary yeah. Fisher. She's the woman who has everything: beauty, fame. My books reflect my own experience of lovemaking as sacred and beautiful. And plenty of hired help. I bet she makes. I think her boyfriend's day. Peter North. But could it be that something? I just love how this has 7,500 views and only 14 for? thumbs up and one thumbs down. <laughs> how does it only have one thumbs Three down? years ago. Well, it's still Meryl Streep, you know? Where's the Roseanne part? There she is. is. Who are the people uploading these trailers? Like, yeah, no, I gotta put the uh, official She-Devil trailer on YouTube. Yeah, but look at her. She's oh, got yeah, a she does have the... She's got a wart. She has a rat in the... What, could these what is this? Possibly have in common? Wow. What could they have in I, common? The trailer's not even telling you what question. this movie is. <laughs> There's just things flying around. <laughs> She's eating like disgusting food. She I do fell down the stairs. Watch this now. Someone get this deranged woman out of here. What? Whoa. Oh, so that's what it was. She didn't make a deal to become a truck. <laughs> Excuse me, a truck. I'm dying. Eric, please don't die. Yeah, don't die, bud. I'm guessing that's my deal with the devil. <laughs> I'm losing weight, but it, meanwhile my uh, my sickness is going up. Well, hopefully you're not losing weight because of your sickness. <laughs> no, it's ironic that way. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, She Devil. You should Do you check that out. think Meryl Streep puts that on her resume? Still? Oh, yeah. Like at the top. No. Much like, um, what was that? Uh, not each, e- Witches of Eastwick. Death Becomes Her? No. The, is, yes, Death Becomes Her. The one her. where she can't die. Yes. Yeah. That one was horrible, too. And is I that remember... Bette Midler who was in that, or she was the w- other witch one? Uh, no, she was in the one with Sarah Jessica Parker. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Hocus Sh- Pocus. Sh- I feel like I liked Death Becomes Her when I saw it, though. I did enjoy that when I saw it. I do not remember anything about it, yeah. but I do remember liking it. Yeah, yeah. You don't remember? I remember that she was dead. She kept painting her skin because she kept turning gray. And uh, Bruce Willis uh, wound up cheating on her. And she wound up killing him, so he had to be oh, dead, Oh, yeah, that's right. Spoiler! Oh. <laughs> in case you, uh, you haven't seen it, and it's not 1992 anymore. Well, it's not. We're three oh, years... Oh, Han was the other one. Yeah. Mm. There you are. Yeah, we're not going to play that. Oh, no, we're not going to play that. We're not going to consider that. Uh, let me tell you what's coming on the show today, and then we'll get into some other things here. Uh, we are pretty guest-heavy, which is nice. Uh, in about 15 minutes or so, we'll talk to Phil Rosenthal... I don't know where Roland is. I know he wanted to talk to him, too. Phil Rosenthal is the co-creator of Everybody Loves Raymond. Okay. And he has a brand new show on PBS called, uh, called I'll Have What Phil's Having. And it's a somewhere in the middle between Anthony Bourdain and Guy Fieri. So you're not getting the cheap comfort food and you're not getting the posh cultured food. Somewhere in the middle where he goes around the world and just shows everybody in the restaurant the food that he likes and he thinks everybody else will like at this particular place. Okay. Yeah, I'll so, buy it. good. Yeah. So food shows are always entertaining and yeah. everybody watches them at all hours of the day. So we'll talk to him in a little bit. Uh, a little later on, uh, Elizabeth Rodriguez, one of the stars of Fear the Walking Dead. Oh, yeah. yeah. On AMC. Also, she's uh, the mother of the inmate who got pregnant by the security guard in Orange is the New Black. Yes. That's my way of saying I don't remember her character. Right <laughs> I'm just pointing that out. Very long-winded way to get to that. Right. Uh, also, uh, oh, Bob Gale, around 7 o'clock, will be calling in live. I believe he's in London. He's calling in to promote the 30th anniversary of Back to the Future, and they're doing something really cool here in Manhattan at Radio City Music Hall. They're going to do a screening of the movie, but the soundtrack is going to be performed by a live orchestra while oh, you watch it yes. in Radio City Music Like they Hall. did with uh, Lord of the Rings that time? Right. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah that's great. So the uh, whole movie score is going to be done by the orchestra as you sit there in you know probably one of the most famous theaters in the world, which is huge. It's, it's an amazing experience. Uh, October 15th and 16th. And that's got a great score, too. Right. I think we're getting... Pe- <laughs> God damn. I think we're getting passes and stuff for it. So Sweet. that'll be fun. Oh my and then gosh. uh also Zachary Levi, who I've wanted to have on the show for a long time, finally comes on the show 
to talk about Heroes Reborn on NBC. You may, of course, know him from his role as Chuck on NBC oh. way back when. And he also has a, a clothing line called uh, Nerd Headquarters. Oh, I would have thought it was Levi's. No, boo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he has a Nerd Headquarters, which is uh, this big geek site now where they make really well-made clothes. Because a lot of you know nerdy, geeky clothing is just like iron-on prints or... or Quick presses and the sh- the clothing is not really of the best material, and they never fit right. Like you can never buy like two shirts and have them both fit the same. Like, like every the- company has, uses different uh, like stock for their shirts, either American Apparel or like Hanes. And they all fit differently. They all shrink differently. Right. It's kind of frustrating. Like uh, the quick prints that they have at Target. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, all of a sudden they'll have. Um, what did I see recently? They had a Bill and Ted one, but it was too busy. Like I wouldn't wear. I love Bill and Ted, but I wouldn't wear that because it was just too much. And you know when you have too big a decal that looks like it's ironed on. Yeah. So if you're doing anything and you kind of sweat, it sticks to you. Like yeah. it's like plastic. Yeah, it's horrible. But speaking of shirts, that's a really nice Rick and Morty shirt. Yes, it is. I the Star I Wars Rick and Morty. One. It's uh, you know, or, or the, where that is. It's the original Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Poster, but it's uh, Rick and Morty, and Mr. Meeseeks is the Death Star. It's pretty awesome. Great. Yes. Did you watch the last episode? I'm trying to think which was the last the episode. Purge. All right, I didn't. Ah. I, I did, but I didn't finish it. Okay, it's good. I think I had like ten minutes left in okay. it. Okay, but uh, so far the season was uh, well done. Yes, except Amazing. for that episode two weeks ago. I don't know which I one. I didn't like that one. The, which uh, one? The, the flashback to Rixty Minutes, where they did like the new Rixty Minutes with like the improv TV network, the one where uh, Jerry had to give his penis as a <laughs> oh, heart. Yeah. Right. I don't know. I, I didn't really care for that one. But. That one was just, I think that one was weird for the sake of being weird. Well, that one was just interesting because like when it started off, like, you know, Rick basically said, he's like, oh, I thought we pretty much nailed this the first time, but here we go. <laughs> but the best was Justin Roiland's Twitter the next day because he was just like, yes, I wrote that episode by myself. So you can pull- just direct all your hate to me. <laughs> was there a lot of hate for it? Why it was a, it was a like very it. polarized. Like if you went on Reddit, it was basically just me seeks ripping themselves apart over who <laughs> loved the episode and who thought it was the worst thing ever. Like, it is really a polarizing episode. Wow, I, I'm amazed. Ew, I, I thought, still enjoyed it. I thought they could do no wrong. No, 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 no. That episode uh, definitely had a lot of uh, angry, angry feedback. Hmm. All right, well, so be it. Just you know, so you know. <laughs> they all can't be gems. Nope. But, uh, Lewis, any luck uh, getting Matt on the phone? Matt's in a tunnel somewhere. I've tried a couple times. He hasn't answered yet. I'm going to keep calling back. Oh, no. I, I hope, hope he's okay. I hope his train's not, like... Trapped underground, Ugh. and because you know they're predicting a lot of these places getting like 15 inches of rain, Ugh. that it's flooding inside the tunnel, and he's just sitting there like <laughs> gasping for air at the top of the just train. An air There's just a three-inch <laughs> gap from the top of the train there, and then Sylvester you know, Stallone has to save him. Yeah, daylight. No, whatever that movie was. No, Matt's the star of this movie here. He's the hero, so yeah. he has to go up and gasp for breath, is. take a big gulp, and then go down, and he's trying to get the train between cars to open up. Yeah, no, he's going down. He's trying to get like his Funko Pop out of his bag to bring it above air. Oh, <laughs> oh well. Poor Matt. Um, oh, can Hopefully we talk about, uh, before we go on, can we talk about your comedy show that you're doing tomorrow? Yes. This is some big news. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm opening for Pat Oswalt tomorrow at Foxwoods in what? Connecticut. How awesome is that? Yeah. That's fucking great. Got two shows, and uh, that's pretty much it. Pat Oswalt, <laughs> good friend to uh, Opie and Jimmy yeah. in this channel. Also, awesome. uh, one of the returning stars to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Agents on of ABC. Shield, yeah. Really? And in yeah. so many Pat things. He was in season two, did very well, was a great character. It's not what you expect Patton to play, and pulled it off amazingly, and he's back for season three. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I know he does a lot of voices on like cartoons and stuff like that, but I didn't know he was on that. He did Rick and Morty this he season. He did Rick and Morty, yes, he and he did, did um, uh, uh, BoJack Horseman, too. See, i got to start watching that. I haven't started Bo- BoJack Horseman Bojack yet, Horseman's, but it's on my list. It's good. It's just there's episodes where you're like, oh, this is pretty good, and then it gets really dark, like just depressingly dark, and you're like, all right, this is... Uh, it's a very interesting plot, <laughs> but I but I I don't know I like it. I think it's cool. I think when that show took the darker turn, I actually liked it more than I did before it did. So I don't know. I would I would recommend watching it. Season two is great. It is great. Um, all the episodes I found are on AdultSwim.com, so you can watch everything. What BoJack? They're all on Netflix. No, I'm sorry. I'm still thinking of Rick and Morty. I know you are. I'm just sitting there getting <laughs> swifty. Uh, all <laughs> those episodes are uh, on Adult Swim, but BoJack Horseman, I think it's two seasons? Two seasons. Two seasons they're all on right? Netflix. And I saw something about I think they're doing another one. Probably. And uh, the amazing show. That's on my list. And what was the other show that we talked about? Oh, uh, 
Wet Hot American Summer. Oh, it's so good. I finally finished everything. I have three episodes left, so I haven't finished it yet. I'm, I'm just taking my time with it. I go through shows too fast, and then everything blurs together, so I've been pacing myself with this, but I really like it. Okay, uh, get it done soon, because next so we week's talk Comic-Con, and I don't know if we're doing a live show next week or not, if we're doing it the, the week after, uh, but definitely finish it. So far, H. John Benjamin's role in it is amazing. He's so good. <laughs> well, like, as soon as I saw him with the can, and I, I knew that it was going to happen and i just i didn't know how it was going to happen but like when it happened it was great i'll just say this cuz people should have seen that if it's not uh, the entire season again is up on netflix h john benjamin great actor you know from when they actually use him to be the actor live on screen and you know somewhere through this and goes you know what it would probably would be better if we just put h john benjamin uh as a voice mm-hmm. so let's figure out how to transition him in this show to a different role where we still have him, but you're getting the element that we really want from him. Well, I mean, he was the can in the first, in the movie. Right. So it was just how he was going to be. I was trying not to spoil it for people. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Pretty much the show on Netflix is a prequel to the movie. Yeah. No, wait, it's not a prequel to the movie. Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. The movie takes place after the show. Right. I'm thinking for some reason there was something... That leads to the next season, but I was wrong on that. That's in there the might movie. be. I'm blurring. Like, there might, see, there might what, see. All right, so this is what I did. I did exactly what you said. I What's watched the, the movie and I watched the TV show like straight through, and everything got blurred. That's the problem. You can't do that. So you got to space it out. You got to space it out. All right. Hey, Roland, how are you, man? Uh, good. How was Hello. the food court? I think good. I heard. I was listening in the back. Sounded great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you glad is. to be back. Yeah, yeah. So, like, if restaurants, open your doors. <laughs> <laughs> I will take your free food. <laughs> so, and your women, too. <laughs> bring women and food, and you can be on Roland's food court. Yeah, pretty much. There I'm cheap. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the one lady you had on um, was very nice, because uh, she's the one that you get the desserts from all the time. Yeah. Uh, butter scotch, right? Yeah, butter and scotch. Butter and scotch in Brooklyn, and they make all these desserts that are infused with alcohol. Yeah. And you got that strawberry rhubarb thing, and then you had a cherries jubilee thing, which I loved. Oh, There's this a... dark and stormy caramel corn here too. Mm-hmm. It's everything she makes is phenomenal. So there's another plug for them. And there's some yeah. more birthday cake over there, I think. Right. All the fried chicken went away. Who took it all? Um, <clears throat> Falcone and I think uh, yep. Young Adrian. Fuck them! I didn't even get a. I I, uh, I got I got a small piece. Look at Lewis. No. Lewis nope. is pissed off. Lewis. He wants a piece too. He didn't get anything. Dude, Falcon was circling like buzzards, just no. waiting. You said somebody stole fried chicken. I just wanted to make sure everyone knew it wasn't me. Oh, that's racist, <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> and I will not tolerate that. Yeah, Lewis was is given it? fried chicken. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do with Lewis. Yeah. It he's, was, he's becoming a problem. The piece I had was very, very delicious. It looks good. I thought That's that was it. a piece of chicken over there, and then uh, Gil told me it's a piece of pie. It's a pecan pie. So I can't have that. It's really good, too. The cake over here looks really good. I can't have that it's either. It's sugar-free, she said. No, it's not. I know. <laughs> it's free sugar. It's like, look at all the sugar frosting that's uh, that's baked onto the cake there. You can eat that and you have a good <laughs> night's sleep. That will un- One piece will undo the 40-plus days that I've tried to build <laughs> off of that. Yeah, you know, you can do it. <laughs> Are you going to do another food court? I think so. When? I think maybe next week. I don't know. Next week? Yeah. During Comic-Con? Well, I would wait two weeks. Because you're going to be busy next week with us. Yeah, there, there's a guest. He, he's texting me. He might be in town. wants to stop by. Ooh. Big guest? Yeah. What does he do in the food world? Nothing. He's in the TV world. In the TV world? Mm. Yeah. It's not hmm. the person we're going to talk to in about seven minutes, is it? No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. Because no. <laughs> I was going to say, don't double book. No, no, no. Uh, no. He has his uh, two TV shows, and he's up in an upcoming movie, too. Mm. So he texts me. He goes, hey, I'm free on Friday. Two TV shows and an upcoming movie. Yeah. Food TV shows? He's oh, Actually, uh, he's in the X-Files. What? Ooh, oh, right. I forgot you told me about yes, that. Yes, that's my tease. There you go. Cigarette smoking man. Ooh. There you go. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Matt's here. Hi. Hello. Yeah. How are you? Oh, wait. Did you make right. it through the right. hurricane all right? There you go. I, uh, I, I mostly made it through the hurricane. The only thing worse than walking through New York City and avoiding people on their cell phones is walking through New York City and avoiding people on their cell phones while holding umbrellas. <laughs> so we're just saying, man. Yeah, it was it was a bit suck. of a challenge, but I'm here. How are you? A little, a little wet, but 
Yeah, but okay. That's all right. You can uh, flap your arms and air out. I'm gonna eat this cake, though. I'm telling you right now. Help that's yourself. That's my dinner. Whatever else. Get, get some biscuits popcorn. over here too. Nice. There you go. Uh, how's your week been? I haven't talked to you in a while because uh, I was uh, down in Florida, which I'll get to in a little bit. Right. But uh, yeah, I haven't seen you in like two weeks. I'm trying to. I don't think I did anything really exciting. It's just been kind of been uh, kind of been life as usual. You know, just uh, rolling through life, getting ready for New York Comic Con and. That's pretty much it. Yeah, New York Comic Con is next week here in New York City, obviously. I can't obviously. believe it's I can't coming wait. up. Oh, my and, God. And uh, it's the 8th through the 12th, which is Thursday through Sunday, yep. which is normally the run that they do. And uh, a lot's going to be going on next week between our show, Big Kev's show, yeah. and uh, all the other things Matt has to do in oh, between. Forget about it's it. It's like Matt dealing with the, uh, you know, with two wives. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a whole family. It's like a reunion. <laughs> In my booth, but it is what it is. Give out look, the booth and everything. It's uh, one twenty six, right? One twenty nine. Twenty nine. We're gonna be in booth one twenty nine. That's close to uh, the block, I think it's called, which is where like all the designer artists, toys, and stuff are. Is Jenny, there. Um, uh, I know. I hey hope you. not. Uh, we're, we're on the main floor this year. We're not in Artist Alley. Um, it's gonna be a good show, man. Last year, one hundred and fifty one thousand people came through over the course of the entire run of the show. This year, I think they're pushing to break that a little bit. I think some more of the Javits Center might be. Uh, Less under construction than yeah. it has been, so is it, a little it's bit more done, right? I think, I think finally it all of it's done. Last year there were still some small areas that were kind of right. like. I think all the work near the Javits Center now is all the uh, the stuff that they're clearing out because I think they're trying to make more hotels. Yeah, they're they're redeveloping right that whole area, Island. right? Their subway station just opened up what two weeks ago, or yeah, the one like on uh, like thirty thirty uh, fourth and whatever, yeah, twenty like sixth and twelfth or something. And so they have they're trying to redevelop that whole area, which look in a couple years will be really good for New York Comic Con, but for this year it's just going to be another. You know, shit show. <laughs> yeah. But it's going to be good. It's it's always a fun time. Are there it's any panels or anything you're really excited for? Um, to be quite honest with you, I gave up on panels at every single convention yeah. I go to yeah. years and years ago. Panels will take up... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step in. No, panels no. will take up... Uh, if you're going as a spectator, will take up most of your time... Uh, you might enjoy the one you get to see because you'll see a list of everything that's going to be there, and you go, "Oh, I want to see this one, this one, this one," and you're lucky to see one, if maybe two of these panels because of the lines. Uh, if you're looking at the bigger star uh, caliber at, at these comic cons, you're pretty much better off. If there's one that you really want, go and see it. But you're not gonna, they're not gonna come down and take photos after the panel uh, or shake hands, and you're like, "Oh, maybe I'll snag it." They just walk off. So if yeah. you're looking to do that. Uh, there's better ways to spend your time at Comic Con unless you really want to see. If you don't want to do the panels, chances are they're all going to be online either later that day or within a couple of days, so you're not going to miss anything. Yeah, for me, Comic Con is really more about Artist Alley. Like, I really love that section of the show. Um, and then it's more about hanging out with friends and catching up with people I don't get to see except for at Comic Con. I have friends coming in from the UK and I have friends from, you know, the West Coast that'll be here and from the, the middle of the country that I only get to see this time of year. So, uh, for me, it's really much more about that than it is about panels. Con, the con for me really is a reunion in a yeah. weird sort of way. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's that's kind of you know for four days it's it's not a bad way to spend a couple couple are, hours. Are there any exclusives that you're like have to get? Um, you know, I have one. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, what's yours? Uh, well, we're gonna go see our friends at Funko. Oh, right. Yeah. Of course. Uh, there's yeah. a another Doctor Who exclusive specifically for New York Comic Con. Right. And uh, I'm gonna go over there and get that. Oh, yeah, really? We're gonna talk to the people at Funko again this uh, during this con. Yeah. Explain everything that's going on for the holiday season. Funko's got some some decent stuff I'm checking out, but I I found um the 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 exclusives that I want shrink each year too. Which I'm kind of okay with, because it means I don't have to really put myself into that madness. And um, a lot of the bigger companies like Hasbro, Mattel, they don't come to New York, or they do, but they don't really do exclusives a lot of the times. Um, I don't think NECA is there this year. Yeah, I don't think so. They are. Um, no, probably. I mean, there's some, maybe some like designer vinyl and like limited edition artist pieces that I really want to check out. Um, but no, not really. And if you're not looking for the major toy brands like Hasbro and Mattel and things like that, or the, uh, I guess I'd call it the second tier, as far as like Kid Robot and Titan and, sure. and those kind of things, Funko, um, it's also a great time if you're a collector or of art or figures or anything like that, to see the smaller independent people and check out what they have. Since the bigger guys aren't there and there's not going to be all the lines for that kind of stuff that you want, you can check out the uh, the smaller artists and the independent people and you're going to find some new stuff that you're like, holy crap, I didn't know this existed or I like this uh, person's interpretation on... 
whatever it is, and uh, you may find some new interests and uh, some new things to collect. Right? I, f- I found, like, when I was walking around Comic-Con last year, I had the uh, the press pass on, and I yeah. was doing a lot of stuff over by, like, Artist Alley, and where, like, all the individual, like, not the bigger toy companies, but, like, you know, the more independent toy companies were, and I found that the second I was there and they saw that press pass, it was like, here's some books, here's some toys, here's... It was awesome. It was like yeah. Christmas. Cool. They were just giving me everything. Well, again, they're looking for a little bit of exposure in that sea of people that are there to see video games and and the bigger companies and the bigger Hollywood panels. Um, and for me now, it's more about walking around and stumbling upon something. Like, that, I, it's a surprise. I like the surprise of it all. That's what, you know I, what I like, I mean? too. I like just, like, wandering around the things you see. Yeah, that's that's it. So, And I get I get booth-locked for a lot of the, the con, too. Um, you know, it's I, I spend a lot of time over there. and so. But it's, again, good times, man. Well, we got a lot to do over at uh, New York Comic Con. Sure. Um, we have a uh, rundown here of a bunch of stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me, that uh, we're going to get to as far as the show. I'm trying to figure out. I don't know if we're going to be live next week just because of the scheduling of interviews and, and what have you. Uh, so I was thinking of doing the show next Saturday, but I think we might push it to the following Friday so we can, you know, uh, be here and, and play everything. Sure. And uh, there's a lot of interviews that we got confirmed for. I'll run down a few of them if, uh, if you're interested here. Yeah. Still pending, I think, on Firefly, which I know. Uh, would mean uh, the world to Matt here to go hang out with Nathan Fillion. Sure. But uh, we have the cast of Banshee, if you're familiar with that show, on uh, Cinemax. Uh, Kevin Smith's going to be back on the program with, with our friends, uh, the comic book men. Nice. Awesome. So we've had them on the show in, in different factions, but to have <laughs> them all together, it's going to be amazing. So we'll have that going on. The cast of the Nickelodeon version of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which features uh, Sean Astin. Yep. Um... Paul uh, Ron Paulson. Ron Paulson. Uh, no, not Ron Paulson. Uh, he, he played Pinky. Paul R. Nelson. Yeah, no, no, maybe it is Ron Paulson. He played Pinky, and he did and an he original did, uh, Yakko. Yeah, and he it was originally what Donatello, but now he's Leonardo. I think. No, now was, he's Donatello. Now he's Donatello. He was okay. originally Raphael okay. in the uh, the original animation, right from the uh, from the late eighties. So we'll have them. Uh, we'll talk to everybody at Robot Chicken. With Seth Green and those guys. Because well, new- they're doing that Super Mansion show now, too. Right. right. I'm trying to see if we're going to get on that Super okay. Mansion thing, because if that's the case, that's Brian Cranston. So that would be awesome if we can get that. Yeah, what was he in cool. recently? <laughs> uh, he was in that uh, video where he was at that uh, electronic dance festival in Vegas where he was spinning. That's right. And then he was in that video from San Diego Comic Con where he did a uh, your mother joke to a guy <laughs> and dropped the mic and the place went nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much Brian Cranston has just been Brian Cranston and awesome. Yeah. That's great. That's uh, all he needs to be. There's a new show called Neon Joe Werewolf Hunter for Adult Swim. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it. We've been about invited it. to go hang out and talk to those people. All right, so let's cool. do it. Figure to check it out. And this is my favorite. We're going to be hanging with the Venture Brothers. Nice. Ooh, very the entire cool. cast. Very cool. Be very, They're very. doing a panel. We're going to get an exclusive with them. That'll be fun. And uh, Ash vs. the Evil Dead. Yes. Very excited about very that. Excited. Bruce Campbell and our friend Lucy Lawless. Very cool, very cool. So those are the ones that I know that we're getting to. Uh, there's still other ones that we're working on. Nice. So it's going to be a, a nice lineup for the Comic-Con show. Of course, we'll talk to Funko. We'll talk to uh, some of the other uh, fine toy stores that are out there. Yeah. And, yeah. There's <laughs> plenty of people to talk to. There is. There's more than enough people there to talk is. to. Uh, I would push to try to get tickets, but they've been done for months. Oh, no, yeah, they're sold There's out. no way you're getting in there. We, yeah. when, unless, you want to buy, unless you want to buy them on the street for like four times the street value. We put in for our stuff, I think, in February. Yeah. And we just got the passes. Yeah. And they forgot to mail mine, so I have to go there on Wednesday to pick up my pass. They're like, oh, we forgot to mail it, even though we said we mailed it to you. And I was like, all right, great. So they I have to go there Wednesday and pick it up. They don't even give me the option of mailing mine. They're just like, nope, you got to get here. Oh, yes, yeah, so yeah. you got to do the same Show thing. Show up early. Lewis, did you get yours? No, I haven't gotten mine yet. I've been checking. And I haven't gotten it. All right, you better yeah, call them. email them because they'll they'll get right back to you. Okay. And they'll because I emailed them, they're like, yeah, we mailed it out to you. And then they email me back like a, a day later. They're like, no, sorry, we didn't mail it out to you. You got to come and pick it up. So okay. I would definitely do that. Not a problem. You might have to take a sick day from uh, from job one <laughs> and uh, come into the city or like go over with Gittles and get your pass, so we can get everybody in there. Yeah, you figure it out. Go early on Thursday too. I yeah. Think. Word. So, so uh, New York Comic Con that is uh, October eighth through the twelfth in New York City at the Javits Center. The um, 
But uh, where was the other the panels? They're not Hammerstein at Hammerstein Ballroom. Ballroom, right? And I think I heard they were doing some at Hard Rock, but I didn't see anything confirmed. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't hear anything about Hard Rock. Just I only heard Hammerstein. Keep in mind the times of the convention because Thursday is not a full day. I think it starts at uh, two or three, and then goes to seven, and then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are full days. So. When is the preview day Wednesday or is no, that early in the day on Thursday? No, preview day is sort of like Thursday. Okay. Yeah. I, I suspect in within another year or two they're gonna have a Wednesday something just because they keep on growing. Well, they don't even have a full Thursday yet, so I guess I'll go full Thursday first and then eventually get the Wednesday. You right. never go full Thursday. Never go full <laughs> Thursday. Um so all right, so that's gonna be uh pretty much our week next week, and then we'll get that whole show together and talk about the experiences and everything else that everybody I'm sure out there loves to hear about. Uh Lisa, you missed the news. Lisa's opening for Patton Oswalt tomorrow. Oh, congratulations. Thank That'll you. be lovely. Yeah, Where's it up? Yeah. It's at Foxwoods? Foxwoods in Connecticut. There's two shows. I think there's still some tickets left for the late show tomorrow. That's yeah, Saturday They night. sold out the first show so fast they had to add a late show. That's awesome. Yeah, and there's only a few tickets left, so... Yeah. Go out there and uh, go see Patton, go see Lisa, have a good time up at Foxwoods. Yeah, and it looks yeah. like uh, the weather will work out in your favor, too, because I think Joaquin is staying far away, so we'll yes. be all right. Is, yeah. that, is that what's going on? I haven't yeah, looked at it in a while. It's not going to hit landfall uh, on the East Coast at all. I think we're going to get a little bit of rain tomorrow, maybe into the evening tomorrow, and then by Sunday they're saying sun. And if you're so. listening to this on Saturday, uh, ignore it, all this Everything, whole weather yeah. part here, because yeah. it probably has changed, <laughs> and it's hitting heading right for us. That's right. Yeah, I'm getting up early tomorrow to get on a Greyhound bus and Ooh, head to Connecticut. That'll be an experience. I know. It'll be so fun. <laughs> How come they didn't send a car? They said I could rent a car if I wanted to, but I didn't want to drive myself. So, so How come they didn't send a car? Send a car? <laughs> I don't know. They don't send cars for opening acts. That's Aww. it. Call a Patton. That's why okay. Hitch, I'm happy to be on the show. <laughs> why don't you hitch with Patton? <laughs> I think he's flying in from Los Angeles. All right. Have him stop. <laughs> <picking him up. laughs> And then your helicopter over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah just take the it's, a, it's fine. It's a, a little bit of a trek, but I just have to sit on a bus. No big deal. He is going to be in New York soon also, and I'm going to open those shows as well. Yeah, I think, nice. in, uh, I think in November he's going to be in town. Yeah, I don't know I if think it's part like, of the New York Comedy Festival. The date's but. a little up in the air because he had to change it around, I think, uh, for a movie. Right. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, to be announced, for sure. All right. TBA, TBA, as they say in the biz. Oh, ooh, the and, biz. And, uh, Eric, by the way, I have a present for you. Ooh, I love presents. I know you do. <sighs> and you're so hard to buy for, and you probably have this already. Oh, but no. Here, catch. That's not a good way to start a present. <laughs> I know. That's the it's all kinds way. of that's, disclaimers. Uh, that is the way you start a present for Eric, because chances are he has you it. You set the yeah. expectations low, and if you hit a really grand slam, slam, it's... You know what's it's, sad? Because that's what I hear on Christmas when I open stuff from my mom. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, well, honey... Chances are you already bought it for yourself. <laughs> well, honey, I got you socks. Uh, let's see. <laughs> what is it? I don't know. Doctor Who... I don't have this. Yay! Let's see? There you wow. go. Home run. All right. I got that in San Francisco in Chinatown. It smells like you did. It's very <laughs> Chinese, right? It's, what, was it fish sauce? <laughs> I was going to say, it sounds like General like Sauce. <laughs> no, that's great. Thank you. All that's really right. Cool. I did it. It's a Dalek shirt, but it's... Uh, it's like somebody threw paint o on top of it, and then it's spilling oh, down. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, that's a nice shirt. Yeah, very cool. cool. Yeah, I was I was in Chinatown <laughs> looking for Chinese stuff, you know, and <laughs> like you uh, good spot. Like you do, that's what you do, right? And this little store just had a whole bunch of Doctor Who shirts, so I was like, "All right, let's do this." Boom! Very we appropriate for the new season too. Tweet that yeah, out, man. You enjoying the new season? Uh, I thank you so much. You're I welcome. appreciate it. I really like the little um uh, that little 13 minute episode and then the first full episode was great. About halfway through the second episode I was like, "Oh my god, this is brilliant. I see where they're going." And then by the end of the episode I'm like, "What the fuck is this nonsense?" So, I'm like on the fence. <laughs> Well, let's see. Uh, what happened at the end of the episode? They were stealing his regeneration. Yes. To implant into the Dalek. Yes, race. that's not the part that bothered me. Uh, the part that he knew that that's what it was going to be done? No, I thought they were finally explaining why Jenna Coleman was a Dalek in her first episode. And then they take her out of the Dalek in the episode. Oh, and I was right. like, oh my god, this is great. It's going to tie it all in finally to her first appearance on the show when she's a Dalek. You know what? For a second, I did wonder that and then I forgot all about it. Yeah. I'm, no. a, I'm a horrible fan. Well, you are. <laughs> Thank you. I no problem. That. <laughs> I'm turning your mic off. Um, <laughs> I deserve it. I can eat cake now. <laughs> yeah, go for the cake. <clears throat> no, I think yeah. so far it's only two episodes in. Uh, if you're listening to this on Saturday, there's a new episode tonight at uh, 9 p.m.? Or 8 p.m. What is it? Uh, 9, 9 p.m., p. right? Yeah. 9 p.m. on BBC America. And uh, the Space Channel, if you're in Canada, That's right. you can check that out there. The Space Channel? That's Space Channel. They just announced that spinoff show now, too. I know. Uh, it's called Class. Class, So it's yeah. based on the school 
which is the first thing you see in the very first episode of Doctor Who way back in the long, long ago. Right. Uh, that's where his granddaughter was teaching, right? Right. And Clara or, teaches no, she there was a now. student there. Yeah. She was a student there. And uh, he's had some other companions that worked at that mm -hmm. school, and the current companion, Clara, works there as well. But it seems like it's going to be a mix between the other two spinoffs that they used to have, Sarah Jane Chronicles right. and Torchwood. So yeah, it's sort of. It's sort of like a mixed in between those two. Yeah, but so, the, but I was trying to read the press release. Is the doctor actually not on the show though? I'm confused because it doesn't say that he's not on it, but all it says is that Jenna Coleman hasn't confirmed that she'll have an appearance on it, but they don't say if he's going to be on it. I don't know because you know they it kept sounds like it's not him about on him. Yeah, you, he never was. You heard the sound, and then right. the person would run off, but you never saw him. Yeah, and I think he only did one, maybe two appearances on Sarah Jane Chronicles. So I don't know. So who knows? But uh, it's uh, that could go either way. It's probably it could be good that he's not there, but he's implied. Sure. Or it could be that if he is on there, it's kind of cool, but then people won't watch it unless he's making a guest appearance on it. So it can go either way with that. Yeah. Well, I guess I don't know when it's debuting, but we'll have to we'll have to wait and see. So we'll is it a prequel see. or a spinoff? Uh, it's a spinoff or so a companion. Uh, maybe is a better. I think it's just. Fo I don't know if it's anybody from the current show to be there. I think it's just focusing on the place. Yeah, and and so and, it's like, is it like and, a Doctor Who school? Or no, like, no, it's a it's Doctor a school, school, but like, but like Time Lord, you know, yeah. university. Weird shit happens at the school, okay. right? Involving aliens, probably, because, you know, Doctor Who, um, and, and, and how they resolve those things. I, but the, the press release was very kind of, uh, wishy washy, timey wimey, <laughs> wibbly wobbly, et cetera, wibbly wobbly, yeah. Remember not to blink. <laughs> So, yeah, we look forward for that. And then uh, so far, I'm enjoying what's uh, been going on with Doctor Who. Sure. Uh, we're going to get to Phil Rosenfall in just a few minutes here. All Was right. Anything else you wanted to touch on before our, uh, before we get Phil in? I here? don't know. I mean, new TV started up what, last week or two weeks back. I think it's, already, it's all just starting. Behind. I'm already behind. Yeah, it's about a week to two weeks. I'm already yeah. behind. I got to catch up on all the stuff that's on my DVR. Um, I watched Blind Spot, Minority Report, Scream Queens, uh, <laughs> and I watched the Minority Shield. Report. I liked it, and I didn't think that I was going to, uh, but it was okay. It was all right. I liked it too. I saw the first episode while in San Diego, right? And uh, exactly the same thing because I'm thinking of the movie, which didn't really get much, you know. Praise or you know it wasn't I critically the movie. acclaimed, but yeah. I loved the movie just because yeah. of how hokey it was, and it was really the first example of all that touchscreen technology that uh, has become part right. of everyday life. Now that was like the first major place where you started to see this stuff, and I'm like, if they can do this for the movie, that means it's coming. Right. And it only took another ten years, but then it showed up finally. Uh, Minority Report I thought was really good. Yeah, Blind Spot was pretty good. That's the one with Jamie Alexander. Right. Um, and Shield this week I thought was really good. So I'm, 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 I'm behind on that. I gotta that catch too. up. Um, and Scream Queens. If you go into if you're gonna watch Scream Queens and you you accept the Scream fact Queens? that Scream Queens, Scream Queens, Scream Queens, I'm sure that. That's going to be the uh, the the porn hub spinoff <laughs> of it. That's it. That's it. Uh, if you go in knowing that it's like way over the top campy, like it's a cross between Scream and Army of Darkness as far as like camp goes. Cool. Like it's kind of silly in that regard. If you go in knowing that, then it's okay. It's not a bad watch. A friend of mine said, "I don't know if I like the show, but the trailers make me want to watch every next episode, so I'm watching it." I'm like, oh, well, I don't know if that's selling me or not, but you know, it's interesting." I'd say check out the first episode. You, I, you get a pretty good sense of what the show exists exactly in the first episode. So, okay, has anyone seen the new Daily Show yet? I haven't seen it. I with haven't. The, no. I haven't either. I haven't seen it. Um, I saw. Uh, after the first night, I saw a lot of positive reviews online, um, but then when you talk to people, they were still kind of scratching their head, like, I don't know if I'm digging this. Yeah, and, and he kind of... I've read some of the, like, some of the That's interviews true. with him, Just or some of the articles. New, everyone's going to be yeah, like, it takes, I don't it know takes if a little while. Yeah. Well, he's kind of coming off as very pompous <laughs> in a lot of his interviews. Kind of very, like, full of himself, and it. I don't know that he's earned that kind of credibility with his audience yet. I've also seen, too, that people aren't really comfortable with him taking a lot of shots at American life and American culture when he's not American himself. Like, John Oliver kind of earned that right sure, yeah. to do it, because people watch it, what he did on The Daily Show, and, and they're cool with it. Um, but him coming in here, and the first thing he's doing is just criticizing, you know, the way of life. I, I saw a lot of people just weren't happy with that. Yeah, I, I think he's going to have an uphill battle, that's for sure. Well, he's but, got really big shoes to fill. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. clearly, yeah. For sure. The uh, the promo that, that was run, the running on this channel... 
uh, for The Daily Show was he said, a lot of the questions I keep getting asked, what do you think of America? Uh, when are you going to get a girlfriend? Are you going to ruin The Daily Show? And I just say, Google it, Mom, or something like that, which was <laughs> kind of funny. But uh, I don't know. I, I'm not racing to see it. I yeah. taped the first episode. I haven't taped other episodes, but... I'm going to try and check it out. Like, Here's this what's weekend. weird, though, because I have tickets to see The Daily Show on Wednesday. So you have to go oh, now. Ooh. Do you want to go? Yeah, I want to go. Okay. Yeah. Fuck yeah. There you you want to go. go? Yeah. Okay. Go. That's nice. nice. Sweet. I have, uh, I have a fourth, so we'll find somebody else to uh, fill that I can that find someone there. to fill that ticket. No, that's all right. I'll no. find somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come right over after I get my badges from the uh, Javits Center. There you go. There you go. Nice. Um, so, yeah, we'll go see The Daily Show. And I think I have tickets at the end of the month for Stephen Colbert. Oh, nice. Well, not to give away, but I'm going to go. I'm going to go and see that. Uh, I believe uh, Paul and Roland are going with me on that one. Cool. Uh, Colbert show, I love. Have it's, anybody it's watched good. it? It's just like an extended version of Colbert Report. Like, <clears> but, <throat> yeah, but I really enjoy it. It's pretty good. Uh, he's good, good, good guests. The little bit he did this week with Tom Hanks was pretty funny. I don't know if anyone saw that. It was the episode John Oliver was on. It was pretty good. With Autum Shank? No, no, not with Autumn Shank. Oh, okay. <laughs> These things are usually so easy. <laughs> uh, let's go Simpsons to reference. Chris in Albany wants to talk about Daily Show. Chris, what's up, man? Yo, what's up, man? Hey, how are you? I'm doing good. Am, am I live? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I, I might be behind this, because I can't hear myself. All right, we'll turn the radio down and talk <laughs> on the phone. Oh, I, all right, I'm talking, I'm talking, I hear you. So, <laughs> I, wow! I, I, don't, I don't like I don't I don't like this new guy that replaced John Stewart. Okay, fair assumption. I mean, he's I, I new. Everyone Stewart, doesn't like everything that's new. John Stewart should have took the fifty bill. The show was bad. Should have taken and the I'm fifty million. Is that what he was offered to what stay on the show? Yeah, I know that's what Dave Chappelle was offered. That was, that's what John Stewart was offered too. And well, he turned that down. Good for him. <laughs> well, you know what he's doing now. Uh, he's him. the executive what, producer. What is he doing now? <laughs> he's the executive producer of Stephen Colbert and The Late Show. There yeah. you go. So plus, he's now a regular, uh, some kind of host or something for WWE. Yeah, I so saw they're going to bring wow. him out for special events. Yeah, he signed a deal with them. <laughs> no. <laughs> what do you mean no? I see. Th- is that Emilio? Yeah, it is. I see lots of thumbs down. Emilio, there. no, 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 no. Don't put him on that mic. Come in here. Come in here. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is Emilio. He used to intern for us back at the XM days. He might okay. have been there with K when we were doing CBS, uh, but he works over at Shave 45. I told him he could come oh, over and hang out. So. Oh, shut up. I'm done with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Emilio. That guy was 10 seconds behind the conversation. That was great. Emilio. Yo. So uh, Yo. what's wrong with Daily Show? No, not the Daily Show. It's just Jon Stewart being the, the heel in WWE. Emilio's is a big WWE fan. Fucking atrocious. <laughs> it's just terrible. He comes in at SummerSlam and he doesn't know who to hit with the chair. It's either the protagonist, which is like, you know, the good guy, which is John Cena, or it's the antagonist, which is Seth Rollins. And this this really hard buildup was like, oh, I hate Seth Rollins. He's a baddie and Rollins would interfere on The Daily Show. And then all of a sudden at SummerSlam, he hits John Cena in the head with the chair and the place erupts. Cena. And- and they're, they're, they're loving him, and he's. And then the next Monday on Raw, they're booing him. It's just like it was terrible. It's like, what do you do with that? Hold on, let me just point out for anybody that thinks all geeks and nerds are the same. Yeah, a wrestling guy just came in here and dumbfounded a bunch of us. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm very confused right now. But, but if we came into his world and stuff like that, and they'd be like, "What the?" Fucking I mean, Blake's chill, one of whatever. my favorite episodes of Doctor Who. All right, so, so there you go. Fuck, he's got credibility. We, all right. <laughs> we, actually, we, me, and you were actually at the Raw. Yes. That, that Seth Rollins took over that Daily Show yeah. that they did at Raw. We were there yeah. that night. Mm-hmm. See, if he wants now, to be a really bad guy to meet John Stewart, then he should have been from Big Daddy on because he didn't pay <laughs> child support for Frankenstein. So it's kind of like, you know what I mean? So there you go. There you I, go. I, I look, I, I, John Stewart, I, he's kind of a legend. I think he kind of gets to do what he wants now. It does. He hosted one of the most... Uh, popular shows of all time, sure. the most award-winning show, I think, television show of all time, uh, for what for what they do for a variety series, and possibly even like one of the more important shows of the last uh, twenty years. Too. I was right. say he really redefined a news program. He got people interested in politics yeah, who yeah. were not he, involved not just in politics. A news program, but like a generation of people were watching the Daily Show for, for their the news, news updates, sure. even though it was all parody and satire. We're getting the legitimate news stories from him rather than watching 11 o'clock or or the major network stuff. No fluff pieces. Yeah. I think everybody our age would rather watch 
uh, the Daily Show over anything Fox News or CNN or MSNBC oh, yeah. would do. Oh, absolutely. With, in a heartbeat. That's why it had such great power. <laughs> even though that's his, even though that has its own comedic value as well. If you watch Fox News to do with it itself, <laughs> that's like train wreck comedy. Though it's different. <laughs> you better be careful. They'll be waiting outside. They're right across the street. <laughs> they're, they're listening at all times. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what they do. No, but the Daily Show and the Colbert Report were just like the one-two punch. Like this is what I'm going to bed to. Sure, you just throw that on. You didn't care about the legit news of people, you know, dying somewhere or some horrific, uh, tragic event in the world. You, know, you wanted to see their interpretation of what it was through John Stewart and and Stephen Colbert. But give Colbert, uh, some Colbert Report. Give the Late Show. This is funny how he says it. He calls it, Welcome to the Late Show with, starring Stephen Colbert. <laughs> I love how in the first episode he was doing his own announcing and then the camera panned over to him and he just like throws the microphone yeah. down. So he's his own announcer now. And the, the intro for the show is amazing. It's that, it's great. It's that new... Uh, it's that tilt shift photography, so it makes everything look like Lego pieces. Like yeah, everyone looks like they're rush scurrying about like ant nice. people. It's great. Yeah, remember how um, Mister Rogers, right, going uh -huh. back where they would pan over the land and make believe like sure. that. And it was always from a real high up because it was a model. That's exactly what they're doing with Stephen Colbert. But the fun part about it, this is he's in almost every shot. It's like Where's Waldo in mm -hmm. every transition of the intro so you're trying to find him in every scene. <laughs> There's That's one awesome. scene where they're just showing two buildings here and looking down towards a park. And he lobs a basketball, like, really far over to this other building that's a little bit lower. And the band leader, you know, jumps up and slams the thing. And you just see Colbert throw his arms back, like, <laughs> yeah, like that, and cuts away. It's really ridiculous. But I can't wait to go down and see the show. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. it'll be live. The awesome. theater looks amazing. They opened up a lot uh, that was being blocked from when Letterman was there. They ripped out all this old air conditioning, uh, the, mount, uh, the uh, protective whatever garb that was on some of the uh, the stained glass and, and the architecture that looked almost right. almost like Greek, you know, the, uh, the columns and things in there. They open it all up, and when they do a wide shot of the from the corner of the stage to show the audience, that place looks bigger than it ever did. Yeah, like the opening shot when it comes in from like that downward angle, it's, it's a really big set. It's right. gigantic. I thought the Ed Sullivan Theater was relatively small, too. Yeah, because you didn't know. With Letterman uh, set, uh, did you ever go see a Letterman show? No, I never had the privilege. Anybody here I ever go see no. Letterman? You have? Yeah. Okay. So when you go in there, it's not because he pushes everything to, um, like the desk and everything is, is so far uh, back on the stage so that you don't think there's much to the stage because the, where the cameras are moving in and out and Dave's back here, the stage is back here and where they walk out. So there's not much room unless they have the band. Then they show all the stage. Stephen Colbert reversed it and put everything up front so that he can be right there in the audience, see the audience. It's not completely black when, when he's doing his stuff. He has a kind of light so you can see the reaction. So he's doing it like a stand-up comic. The way he does his monologue and the way he does his bits from the desk so he can see everybody's reaction and gauge where he's going from there. I'm sure. Well, that was that was kind of closer. That's how the Colbert Report uh, set was, wasn't it? It was much more illuminated, and he was able to kind of interact with the audience. And yeah, a it was bit. very so, well lit. Yeah. yeah. So he's he's taking what he know worked there and what he was comfortable with there, and he's translating it over. And of co of course, that makes sense. I mean, it, it it makes his transition that much easier for him. And right after his, because he, he he does a cold, not a cold open, but sort of a uh, a short open, comes out, does his monologue and stuff. Does a joke before going to the actual official intro. When he comes back, you see him always, like Brian said, throwing the microphone under his desk so you don't know it's him being the announcer. And then between that and his first guest, it's back to being sort of the Colbert Report, where he's doing politics and, and uh, analytical stuff and whatever. And it's it's he gave you what you want. He did what he wanted to do, but he also gave you what you wanted to make the transition a lot easier. And he's not like doing it as the Colbert personality. Like, he's just doing it as Stephen Colbert doing it. So it's a little different, but I like it. So the I think character of, of from the Colbert Report is not there anymore. Yeah, it's not there no anymore. No. It's still it's still him, and he's still doing like the same kind of thing. But it's just without that uh, like edge to it. <laughs> right, you know that what bravado. I mean? and, yeah, 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 it's okay. just without that. It's a different interpretation of the man <laughs> who played Stephen Colbert, Colbert yeah. from yeah. the Colbert Report. <laughs> All, All right. right, fair enough. There we go. Fair enough indeed. Uh, let's go to uh, Matt in PA. He wants to talk to Lisa for a moment. Matt? Hey, what's going on? Hey, how are you, man? Hey, Matt. Doing great, doing great. Hey, Lisa. How are you? Good. How are you, buddy? Doing great. Great. Just calling to uh, congratulate you on the big show tomorrow night. I wish I could be there. Thank you. It's going to be awesome. Okay. Should, we, should we say that you're my cousin? <laughs> 
I'm like, you guys are very familiar, so something's going on. I thought he was, uh, I thought he was this stalking. another Matt. I was yeah. like, hey, Matt, call into the show today. Um, we probably should take a break. Uh, Lewis, you know, we'll move uh, Phil down because uh, we got... I didn't realize how late we went here. We got Bob Gale calling in around 7 o'clock. So let's take a break, Lewis. Uh, we'll double up on that, and then we come Bye, back. Matt. Bob Gale. No, he's already gone. <laughs> Bob Gale from uh, Back to the Future fame. We'll talk to him about the 30th anniversary of possibly one of the greatest movie franchises that ever existed. Nice. All right? Be right back. Welcome back to the program. My name is Eric Nagel. The phone number is 866-969-1969 if you want to get in touch with us here. Matt OG, Giddles. Lisa Correo and uh, our friend Emilio is uh, hanging out with us here tonight. And we have a guest on the phone who I'm very excited about, if I can remember which mouse answers the phone. And that would be <laughs> this one right here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, mouse. please say hello to the one and only Bob Gale. Hi there, Eric. How are you? Sir, it's, a, it's an honor to talk to you. How are you? I'm great. Thank you very much. We're all huge Back to the Future fans here, uh, but I'm sure you hear that here. all the time. <laughs> So uh, let's, uh, let's tell everybody the exciting news here and why you're calling. Well, what's happening in New York City on October 15th and October 16th is Back to the Future in concert at Radio City Music Hall. And this is a totally awesome event in which the movie is uh, projected, but the score is played by a live orchestra while you're sitting there. That is so cool. It is so cool. We did this at the Hollywood Bowl at the end of June. Uh, we had 16,300 people there, and it was totally awesome. So we're going to break that record at Radio City, right? <laughs> well, I, you know what? I'm, I'm not up on the current seating, uh, uh, seating capacity of Radio City over two nights, but maybe, maybe so, or maybe they'll just pack them in the aisles. No, yeah. screw that. Screw the Hollywood Bowl. We're going to do this thing. <laughs> okay. we got also... Uh, uh, Christopher Lloyd is going gonna, is gonna to be attending. Nice. Oh, wow. So cool. As well as... Uh, James Tolkien, Mr. Strickland, yeah, uh, Slacker, and of course uh, the one and only composer himself, Alan Silvestri. Wow! So will will they be there just for the event? Or are they going on stage? And uh, uh, I think we're all, we're all going on stage to introduce the movie and okay. uh, wave to the audience and uh, um, you know let everybody know that uh, for whatever. Uh, they paid for their ticket. They actually, they actually got to see some celebrities. That's good. <laughs> Will you be roaming the floor so everybody can uh, come over and say hi and uh, well, thank you for this masterpiece? Uh, I think there's. I think you can get VIP tickets uh, for a sort of meet and greet thing, and uh, I'll probably be around afterwards to uh, say hello, shake hands, uh, take pictures, and so forth. Um, uh, depending on what the uh, security arrangements are, <laughs> right. Um, and also, uh, uh, you should know that uh, Alan uh, has written some additional music for this presentation. Oh, wow. Because everybody's there to hear music, so there is a score in some sections of the movie that there was there is not score if you uh, saw it in the theater or watch your, uh, watch your uh, Blu-rays or DVDs. So that's, that's very cool. That's awesome. And um, the movie is... The movie is looks beautiful. Uh, it's a digital transfer DCP proje projection, and uh, I, I got to tell you, when when uh, when we went at the Hollywood Bowl, um, my wife turned to me and said, "You know, this is like watching the movie for the very first time." Uh, and several other people that, that were there uh, came up to me afterwards and said the same thing because the excitement of the crowd, coupled with how great music orchestral music sounds when it's played live it's uh it's 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 a fantastic experience and if you have never seen back to the future in an audience uh this is the best kind of audience to see it with are you amazed when people uh, say that they haven't seen the movie at all and i'm not saying like kids 15 and under but when you see grown adults and they're like i've never seen back to the future does, does that does that like dumbfound you well if they're missing teeth <laughs> but if they do have the full set of teeth, yeah, it does. <laughs> I don't know how you could not have seen it in some capacity. I feel like growing up, it was on all the time on like cable and on network, and even now today, you still run into it. Was it on HBO all the yeah. time. It was actually on last night. I was watching. Yeah. It. it seems to be on somewhere, sometime. Um, yeah, it's it's absolutely. Listen, thirty years ago. Uh, the movie came out originally in July 1985. 
And 30 years ago, if somebody tra- had traveled back to 1985 from 2015 and said to me, "Hey, Bob, you know what you're going to? You know where you're going to be on October 15th? You know what's going on in New York City, the Radio City Music Hall?" And they told me about this. I'd say, "Man, what are you drinking? <laughs> Can I have them, please." Are you tired of, of I mean, because it's, it's so ingrained, at least in American culture, and I'm sure worldwide, but do you ever get tired of having to talk about Back to the Future? Because I know you've had other stuff, but it's just like everybody always jumps to that it's one a piece. Phenomenon. Yeah. You know what? No, I actually, I actually, I do not. It's, it's flattering. It's wonderful. I mean, this is what, you know, every, every filmmaker dreams of having a movie that, that, uh, is, is, is beloved as Back to the Future is. Um, I was actually talking to Bob Zemeckis about this uh, recently because he's out there doing publicity for his his great new movie, The Walk, and he just said, you know, they they asked me about The Walk, but then everybody wants to ask me about Back to the Future, and I and he at first he seemed a little irritated by it. I say, well, you know what, Bob, all those people were kids when the movie came out, and this was probably one of their very favorite movies. And he took a moment. He said, yeah, you know what. I remember when I met Hitchcock, and all I wanted to do was talk to him about Rear Window and Psycho. So um, it's it's great. All, all I can say is, hey, thank you. <laughs> I, I'm curious to know, are, are you, do you have any involvement in the, uh, for those of you who don't know, there was just a new uh, Blu-ray uh, anniversary edition that's coming out later this year, and there's a new short starring Christopher Lloyd that's part of the Blu-ray as Doc Brown. Did you have any involvement in that short? Yeah, well, I was... Uh, I'm sort of the uh, I'm sort of the gatekeeper of, of of Back to the Future content. So although I didn't write it or direct it, uh, they they did uh, make sure that I signed off on the script. And when they shot it, I I I went because uh, who doesn't want to see Christopher Lloyd playing Doc Brown again? You know, it's it's great. It's it's it's, it's a lot of fun. And also on that Blu-ray is a uh, is a new documentary. Uh, about the restoration of the DeLorean, the the uh, original A car DeLorean that we used in all three movies. Oh wow! Had been left kind of to just rot on the back lot at Universal. That's what happened to Stargate. <laughs> they left it out in the desert there, and then when they went to go back to do the series, the whole thing was just a mess. Yeah, well, this this is a this is a common thing because the studios and the movie companies don't understand how important this stuff is to. Is to the fans and, and you know and to the culture in general. So uh, luckily, uh, um, I stepped in and, and said to Universal, "Hey, we got to do something about this. And if you're not interested in doing something about it, I'll find somebody who is." And they said, "No, no, no. You're right. We should do this." And so there's uh, this new documentary uh, uh, documents uh, how this was done, and and the restoration was done by the fans, which is so cool. Because nobody cares more about these great old movies than the fans, um, more so, I think, even than the studios, because those guys are, they're just paid to do their job, but our fans love whatever it is, whether it's, it's, whether it's Back to the Future, whether it's Star Wars or Godfather, you, you pick it, The Wizard of Oz. I mean, if somebody told me, hey, um, you want to you polish some of the bricks on the yellow brick road? I'd say, sure, I'll, sure, I'll, I'll spend an afternoon doing that. What the hell? So, as the gatekeeper to all things Back to the Future, and who's I know the you, key master? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know you've talked about it in the past um, that Back to the Future, there's not going to be a fourth one, um, which is awesome. I don't want a fourth one, to be quite honest with you. Good, thank you. Um, and and hopefully there's not going to be a, a reboot, reboot or no. reimagination yeah, no, of it. You. Because really, Back to the Future is perfect the way it is. Thank you. It should be cherished the way that it is, and it should be. It should just stay that way. It shouldn't be touched by anybody else. I mean, clearly, Christopher Lloyd coming back to do a Doc Brown short, short the, the, that's great. The, hair on my arm stood up just from the teaser and I was really excited but I'll make an exception for that but other than that I, I, I think it just needs to be the way it is well well, Bob Zemeckis and I totally agree with you that's why we've taken a you know drawn a line in the sand and say hey this this is not you know we're not we're not going there we're not doing what everybody else wants to do and you know and they say well you know you guys can make a whole lot of money and we say well you know we, we've made a lot of money we, we don't need to you know we don't need to sell out <laughs> to sell out our children to, to, for this, it's just. Uh, Do you still get approached about it? 
You know what? I have not been approached about it in a really long time because, as I say, I think I think Bob and I have have uh, have put that message out there, and everybody's heard it loud and clear. And and like you guys, the the overwhelming majority of people are saying, "Hey, that's great. That's they should leave that alone. Let's not touch it." I mean, we've all seen these franchises where they go back to the well one too many times. <laughs> yeah, the remakes you know, are horrible. You, yeah, and, and you're a sucker because you say, "Well, I got to see that because it's it's such and such." And even though you and you go and you know before you even buy your ticket, it's going to be crap. <laughs> you'll go. I mean, it's, it's an interesting phenomenon, isn't it? What do you What do you do if you get that phone call one day and they say, "Look, the studio's looking to uh, to uh, reboot Back to the Future." I think that's when I just start losing my shit. Just We're going to make the DeLorean a Fiat. <laughs> I, I was just yeah, this. right. Well, yeah. Uh, the, well, if that happens, so there was. I mean, the rumors are hilarious. There was one going around a couple years ago uh, that Justin Bieber was going to play Marty McFly. Oh, oh God. Uh, what was he going to be? A douchey Marty McFly? <laughs> <laughs> that's horrible. But, you know, or, or maybe they'll. Maybe they'll. Well, I'll tell you one thing that they can't do. They can't do the. Uh, they can't do the gay and lesbian version of it because uh, Marty would definitely not be born, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, I, you know, I was even thinking about this the other day. I don't think that Back to the Future would work as a reboot. Like that whole concept of of what the future is now as opposed to, like when Back to the Future 2 came out, right? You were really excited about the future that they were presenting yeah. to you. But the way technology is evolving now, like I kind of feel like that 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 concept of what the future is is in our face all of the time, that right. how would a new Back to the Future make that special? Well, I don't know that it could. And the other thing that's interesting, because, again, Bob and I were talking about this, too, you know, the difference in the fashion, in the clothes that people wore between 1955 and 1985 was, you know, really, really powerful. But if you take somebody dressed in 1985 clothes and have them walk around the streets of New York City... Nobody's going to look twice at him. It's called Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I live. <laughs> An H&M near you. <laughs> Kanye West, you lie. <laughs> well, what's going... Like, you you said earlier about if you went, uh, you know, from 2015 back to 85 and tell them what was going on and everything, they're coming out with stuff from the movie that you didn't think they ever would. They uh, Was it last year or the year before was the big... Uh, to do over the uh, the n the Nike Air sneakers for Marty McFly yeah, in the yeah. future, those came out. Now the hoverboard toy uh, <laughs> they put out there, and they're trying to make the real hoverboard now. That's right. Finally. Yeah, and they um, you know we have we have drones. <clears throat> you know, there's a USA Today gag. Right. We're the drone, and we've got drones. And maybe now. Miami will win a World Series. We don't know. <laughs> well, the Cubs, the Cubs might. You know, I was actually just down. The the, the folks from Miami. Uh, had had me down uh, for Back to the Future night at Marlins Stadium uh, last uh, exactly one week ago because uh, when we predicted that there would be Major League Baseball in Miami, it didn't exist. So you know we we picked the wrong league, but uh, we got we got the city right and the concept right. Screw Nostradamus, you know Bob Gale is a problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know he really is. He's really he's batting almost a thousand here. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that. With the but... Nike auto laces with the Air McFlies, you created such a stir within the sneaker community that people are paying upwards to seven thousand dollars for this shoe. That's well, their own fault. Well, that was <laughs> that was a charity thing. Yeah. You know, but I mean, you know, Nike does not have the self-lacing shoes on the market now. They're no, they don't. Ones that do, and they, I mean, you guys saw the article uh, earlier this week about the about the marathon runner in Kenya, and where his his custom-made Nike shoes, the insoles, fell out of them or something. Right. I mean, oh, geez. wow! They can't, but they can't make a shoe with the soles stay in. That's kind of whoa. You know what? I was just thinking too for the live event. It's probably too late to get this done. But if you could make playbills for this event that looked like Gray Sports Almanac <laughs> and you gave them out to everybody, I think uh, that would yeah, be a real that's a good idea. I'll, I'll, I'll suggest that. I, again, I don't know if, <laughs> if they can turn it around that quickly. Let me just translate what Bob's saying here, and he goes, "That's the thousandth time I've heard <laughs> that." <you idiot." laughs> But could old Biff hand them out, though, <laughs> as people are walking well, in? Well, you know, save the clock tower flyers. flyers that's pretty easy to do. Yeah. There you go. That's cost affordable. <laughs> well, that thing burnt down a few years ago, right? Didn't the, the set actually get destroyed? Yeah. Uh, part, part of the oh. two sides of that street got burned to the ground. 
um, and they re they rebuilt it and reconfigured it. So it's a little bit different than it than it was. And you know, people have asked me, "Well, are you sad about that?" But I'm not actually because it means that there's the no fourth the movie where that's in Back to the Future <laughs> is forever that version. Right. Mm. Well, um, as Matt had said, you know, he's glad that they're not going to make a fourth movie, and, and we hope they don't reboot this film uh, anywhere at any time. But let me ask you about some of the side projects that they've been doing with the Back to the Future franchise, sure. as far as uh, the figures that Funko has put out, and of course, uh, Back to the Future, Back to the Future's involvement in the new Lego Dimensions that just came out. Yeah, isn't that cool? Uh, have, have you seen that yet? Yes, I got a chance to play it. It's amazing. It's great. And then the Doc Brown, the Doc Brown levels are coming out. I think in February, you can get the Marty McFly uh, uh, add-on pack now. But the idea that you can have Marty McFly interacting with Batman and Homer Simpson <laughs> it's just it's totally great. So when they approached you with this kind of thing here, did you did you get a little standoffish? Are you a little bit overprotective no, about no, your no, franchise? No, 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 because when when they on on that one, that was one that was a, that was an easy that was an easy yes. Because you guys saw the Lego movie, right? Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, what's great about that is that it totally captures the way kids play with their toys. It does. You know, Kids, you mix, adults. You mix yeah. toys, <laughs> Eric. <laughs> Me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you put those sex dolls in there with the... Uh, you know, with the G.I. Joe, right? Jesus, Bob. Oh, wow. <laughs> that took a turn. <laughs> wow, Back to the Future Four would be completely different. <laughs> We're going to reenact that car scene. <laughs> <laughs> the doors go up. <laughs> so, so anyway, yeah, so that, so they, they said, this is what we want to do. I said, oh, okay, I get that. Sure, let's, let's do that. Let's, let's. Let's have Doc Brown on the Yellow Brick Road. What the hell? Yeah, I mean, I, I got the chance to play it. It's obviously out now, so everyone can pick it up. Uh, and like you said, the uh, the Doc Brown stuff is coming as an add-on uh, very soon. Uh, it's definitely fun. Now, you have these things. You have uh, Funko fi- uh, figures out. There's constant T-shirts ever since that movie came out. That, this franchise has just not gone away as far as posters and, and T-shirts and things like that. There, there's um, also a new book coming out on October 20th called Back to the Future, The Ultimate Visual History. It's a big coffee table book. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, if you don't know what to get somebody for Christmas, get them this book because it's and what's, it has more information about Back to the Future than has ever been in one place before. And it has all these little additional props that, are, uh, that, that you can pull out of the book. So you can, you, there's a lenticular photo of the disappearing photo where so you have Marty and his, his brother and sister that disappear. That's pretty cool. And you you have like replicas of the of Jaws the Jaws nineteen poster and Doc's flux capacitor drawings and the letter that Marty writes to Doc Brown and the the Western Union letter that <laughs> Doc writes to Marty and all those stuffs all that stuff is, is are inserts in the book. So um, you know go check it out on Amazon uh, and, and and get one because it's. Um, I think I think Amazon's selling it for only thirty bucks right now. It's it's uh, it's 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 a bargain. It's it's it's, it's really great. Then we got a new comic book coming out on uh, on October twentieth uh, that is going to explore some of the sort of untold tales of Back to the Future. So for the fans that want to know, well, how did Marty and Doc actually meet? That's we tell that story in the first issue. Oh, I thought it was Tinder, but all right. <laughs> Grinder. Grinder. No, 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 you, you guys are. You know, we have I will to not have you besmirch this family franchise. Family franchise. <laughs> uh, I have a question. Uh, have you seen Rick and Morty by any chance? Of course. What do you? What do you? How do you? What do you think about it? I think it's funny. <laughs> no, I'm like, hey, it. this seems familiar. <laughs> yeah, it is. But you know, imitation. Uh, greatest form of flattery. Did uh, Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon uh, reach out to any of you guys and say, "Hey, look, we're well, we're Dan, doing this thing. Dan it might look like Dan what you did." Back to the Future fan. Yeah, and uh, he's not a big fan of the sequels for some reason, but he loves the original, and um, he's got you know a really warped mind. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, talking about the reboot was disturbing when you mentioned Justin Bieber, because as the woman here, Marty McFly was my biggest crush as a kid. And I can't imagine. Ugh, I can't imagine Justin Bieber. Ugh, 
We're it's not going to let horrible. that happen. No, then please don't please, let that no. happen. She no. used to pause with the VHS line when he was laying in his Calvin Klein's on yeah, the bed. Yeah, you don't even want to know. <laughs> <laughs> That's I my know. biggest crush. I mean, Alex P. Keaton was okay, but once Michael J. Fox was Marty McFly, that it was, was all it. all over. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I actually got a question that I have to ask. Go ahead. Who does time travel better, Doc Brown or Doctor Who? Well, this is... The TARDIS this is a no brainer, guys. Well, because what's it... cooler, a DeLorean or a phone booth? <laughs> I like the phone booth. Well, hold and on, the sir. It's so not this... a phone booth, it's okay, a police box. Yeah. Whatever, whatever. I think Doc Brown is a time lord. Phone Let's booth is Bill and Ted. <laughs> right. <laughs> and if you saw the epic rap battles of history battle between Doc Brown and Doctor Who, you, you, it's left for you to decide. Yeah. There is no clear winner. Well, I was waiting for Bugs Bunny to show up and say, What's up, Doc? Oh. <laughs> so who's who's going to be playing the epic guitar solo live during the uh, performance? Well, uh, that will that will be left to uh, that will be left to um, who, who was it? It was uh, it, it's it's the movie. It's only the score. Dave Grohl. It, it's not <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember who who, who actually played the uh, Paul Hansard. I think actually played the played the guitar solo in the, on the. Uh, in the movie. Let me ask you then, with the guitar solo and, and, and what have you, what did uh, Chuck Berry say about using his song in that way in the movie? Well, he laughed. I mean, we had to make a deal with him. Of course. Uh, if, if he didn't... He's if notorious he didn't for being funny, paid. If he didn't think it was funny, he would say, you know, get the hell out of here, guys. But uh, uh, he, th he thought it was funny, uh, at least uh, when, when uh, with the check. A company that he thought it was funny. Well, it's always funnier <laughs> with the check company. <laughs> Talking with Bob Gale, the uh, producer and co-writer of Back to the Future, one of the not only one of the best movies, but one of the best franchises uh, that, that's ever been made. When you were writing this movie, uh, did you insert any parts of your life into the, any of the characters there? Like, did you grow up? Did somebody Whoa. call you chicken? <laughs> <laughs> Because that seems to be a big sore spot yellow. in this movie. <laughs> what Did you peeping Tom out of <laughs> on a what, what, what planet does a does a, an American boy have to be on where nobody ever calls him chicken and he isn't interested in looking at a girl with no clothes on? <laughs> I don't know why Emilio threw that part in because everybody wants to do that. But the chicken <laughs> well, part, well, I was just yeah. wondering if that oh. was a was that something that uh, that came from uh, your own life experience? No, no. I mean, it wasn't. You know, look, everybody gets called chicken. I, I was not tormented by bullies, nor was Bob Zemeckis. Uh, that was just, you know, everybody has their run-in with a bully, but it wasn't a, it wasn't a constant source of anything. There was um, uh, my next-door neighbor when I was a little kid was a, was a professional photographer, uh, and he had a dark room in his basement, and he would uh, invite the kids in the neighborhood over to see how move, uh film was developed and i you know he, he was kind of a doc brown inspiration i guess the idea that here's this guy that's got all this cool equipment in his house uh, and he can make magic happen so that was probably part of my uh part of my sensibility in that and i put all kinds of little references uh to my high school and stuff that only other kids that went to my high school back then would get um, but that was always fun when i'd hear Hear from them. I saw your movie, Gail, and when uh, when uh, the guy says, uh, "Let me give you a nickel's worth of free advice," when Strickland says that, I fell out of my chair because that was our our vice principal used to say that to everybody he nailed in the hallway for being tardy. All right, because my other question was going to be, did you ever, you know, go out and party too much and then break into a house that you thought was yours but it wasn't, and somebody came running after you with a bat? No, that. That's an experience I have not had. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the big live event for Back to the Future in concert at Radio City Music Hall is October 15th and 16th. Uh, go online to get tickets. We put the link up on It's Eric Nagel on Twitter, so you can uh, just click there and, and buy your tickets. Go and see this. You get to watch the movie. Uh, Christopher Lloyd's going to be there. Um, who else is going to be there? I'm sorry. James Tolkien, Mr. Strickland, uh, Alan Silvestri, the composer. And yours truly. Mr. Bob Gale right. will be there. Uh, go get tickets. Check this out. It's a once-in-a-lifetime event uh, until, I guess, the 40th well, or the twice. 50th. They're doing, it, they're doing it tonight. I'm so. saying in New York. <laughs> so go get tickets for that. Uh, before we go, Bob, i got to ask you a question. This is coming in from uh, our friend Mike from Masters of None. If you'll entertain some Back to the Future nerdiness, sure. as if you haven't already. Uh, uh, he has a question. 
Were there two DeLoreans in September 1885, the one that Marty ripped the fuel line off and the one that Doc just buried eight months prior in January of, 19, uh, January of 1885, and couldn't they have just simply patched the fuel line and siphoned the gas from the other one to the one that wasn't working? That's a genius okay. question. This, this, Nerd. Uh, this is not the first time that I've heard this question before. Okay. And uh, there are two very good answers for this uh, that both are applicable here. Number one... If you're a car guy and you know that you're going to store your car, put your car in storage for a year or more, or in this case, 70 years, the first thing, that, well, it may not be the first thing you do, but you are going to drain all the fluids out of your car. That's right. Okay. Uh, so Doc would, have, Doc would have put it in the mine without any gas, without any oil. And, in, and if you rewatch Part 3 uh, at the drive-in movie theater, uh, Doc tells Marty, you know, now, now I've, I've, I've put gas in the car. He, he specifically says that, you know, suggesting that there wasn't any when, when they pulled the car out. So, the, so that's, that's number one. Number two is, is the time travel conundrum, which is if they were to go and disturb the car that Doc had already, uh, sealed up there and, uh, which years later Marty, uh, gets out of there, and they break something on it, would that not create some sort of a time paradox that could screw up the space-time continuum? And Doc Brown is too responsible of a physicist to uh, consider doing something like that. I thought, I honestly thought you were going to go the William Shatner route and say, number two, it's a movie, <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> well... I that's, like that there are two plausible. Three, yeah. but, uh, I'll let William Shatner be William Shatner, and we'll let Bob Gale be Bob Gale. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, the big Back to the Future live concert at Radio City Music Hall, October 15th and 16th. Uh, the link is up on uh, It's Eric Nagel on Twitter there for you to buy tickets. Go check this out. It's going to be a great time. We're going to go. Mr. Gale is going to be there, and uh, hopefully maybe I get to meet you in person, sir. I hope so, yeah. You guys come up, come up to me and, uh, you know, Put a pie in my face or something. I will come meet you, or security will throw pie. me out trying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate your time. You're welcome. I appreciate your time. All right, Thank take you. care. We'll see you next uh, in two oh. weeks. Exactly. All right, take care, man. Ooh. Okay, bye. He continued. That's awesome. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> he continued. Nice. Clever. He didn't say so. to be concluded. <laughs> so that means there's more times so with Bob right. Gale. I like you put you the go. emphasis on the ripping of the space-time <laughs> continuum. Yes. So let us be responsible <laughs> with that. So we didn't just destroy all of time in existence. Yeah. <laughs> that was very nice of him. Once again, it's a movie. <laughs> you know what I just found out, too? James Tolkien's still alive, too. He's one of my favorite <laughs> actors. He was in um one of my favorite movies. Back to the Future. No, he oh. was in <laughs> Masters of the Universe. He starred as the cop Lubick. Oh, my God, oh, you're geez. right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you, that awful movie. That movie is terrible. It is so good that it's so bad. Well, exactly, but it's a bad movie. <laughs> Dolph Lundgren as He-Man makes sense. Oh, no, it. Frank it Langella as Skeletor? All oh, makes sense. <laughs> makes sense. No, there was people in the movie that weren't in the toy line or the, the car, in the yeah, cartoon. Yeah, Courtney Cox. No, the little <laughs> midget thing. No, Gwildor, well, Gwildor was, was supposed to be the Orko, because I guess yeah. they can't make a floating a thing. Floating I don't thing. think anybody in thing. North America is listening to this now. <laughs> <laughs> We've just gone so far down I'm this sure there's some more. Canadians listening. And it's not me that did it. I want to point that out. It's Emilio. I have Gwildor toys, too, so suck it! (laughs) All right. uh, We're going to take a break. Uh, When we come back, we're going to talk to Elizabeth Rodriguez from Fear the Walking Dead, which is an awesome show. The uh, finale... The Sunday. Is this Mm -hmm. Sunday at uh, 9 p.m., I want to say, on AMC. That is correct. And uh, you should check it out. All the others are on demand. And then, in uh, in the week after... No time at all, we're going to be back to Walking Dead for the brand new season. So we, uh, we can get into all of that stuff. Plus, she's in Orange is the New Black on Netflix. You should definitely check that out as well. Uh, Lisa, do you have anything you want to plug before we go to break? I'm at QED on Monday at a show called Cartoon Dump by Frank Conniff from Mystery <laughs> Science Theater. It's wow. a pretty nice. awesome show. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Maybe we should have him on, too. Oh, you totally should. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. let's He's get awesome. that, let's get that uh, in the works let's in the next few weeks. Let's make that happen. Uh, anything else we've got to plug before break? No. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Emilio, why don't you give out your Twitter and get some followers? Oh, please, I need those. At Emilio Sparks, E-M-I-L-I-O-S-P... A R K S. Okay. Sparks. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, sir. When we're ba- uh, when we come back, Elizabeth Rodriguez will be here. Hang on. It's Eric Nagel. Eric Nagel. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to welcome to the show right now. You know her from shows like Orange Is the New Black, and of course, Fear the Walking Dead. Sunday nights, 9 p.m. on AMC. 
Elizabeth Rodriguez. How are you? Hello, I'm well. Thank you. How's everything? Things are kind of great right now. I would say so. Yeah, 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 You're yeah. You're on two successful television shows. Not that you uh, haven't been on successful shows before. I know, but... Going through your rundown, you've been on almost everything. I know. I was sorry. I was just joking about clearly I'm affordable. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I, I'm great. I'm on two successful shows that are completely different genres, um, playing completely different characters, uh, and they happened to cross uh, audiences, I found out, while I was at uh, Comic-Con, oh, I thought you were which shocked were, me. I thought you were going to say they were going to cross over, like the zombies. No, but I was shocked the, when I showed up to Comic-Con, <laughs> and I came out, and people were like, ah! I was like, oh, do you guys watch Orange? Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't, it's just weird that I would think they, they would be different, like people can't have more than one taste, I don't know. I'm a little naive. Let's start with Comic-Con, uh, since you just brought it up here. I, I was out there for San Diego, and... Uh, Big response to Fear the Walking Dead, only because everybody knew it was in Los Angeles, and yeah. they knew it was supposed to be uh, sort of along the same timeline as Walking Dead, but as we see that it's really more of a prequel yeah. without the two connecting, at least for right now. Um, and right outside the actual convention across the street, they had this little setup with a sign that said Los Angeles. I know. And for the, most of the first day, it did nothing. Like, there was a chain link fence around its stairs. And uh, it just looked like an alleyway in Los Angeles and nothing happened. So people were like, I don't know what this is. And then when they realized, oh, it's Fear the Walking Dead or whatever, they're just taking photos. And then I saw later on that first day, they didn't tell people what they were going to do. So people are on the steps taking photos. And all of a sudden, the walkers just come out and scare the shit out of everybody. And there's people screaming. That's awesome. Running. Yeah. Oh, that's, I didn't know that. Well done, guys. <laughs> so uh, what was your con experience like? Was that your first con? It was my first con. It was really, it was really intense only because we were shooting the night before really late. And so like. The amount of hours I got to sleep was never enough. Right. Uh, as a woman, you need at least two more hours on both ends, not, you know, either side just to sort of wake up and try to look pretty. So I made me a little more jealous about the guys. Everyone was really great. It just was like this thing that was you can't prepare yourself. You're going from here to there. You don't even know. You're like, where are we going? What are we doing? What are we going? What are we doing? You know, snacks, food, food, food. Where are you going? What are you doing? Pretty, pretty, pretty. Touch up, touch up. You know, and you can't ever, you don't even know by the end of it who you saw, who you right. did, and who took pictures with you. You, you, if you're lucky, you have two seconds as you cross somebody else's itinerary to say hello if you even see anyone. It's great that within Comic Con, it's the only time where it's really acceptable to have people that will shove massive amounts of people out of the way so that talent can walk through and everyone's cool with it. Yeah. Like if you have handlers or something and they're just pushing kids in Batman right. costumes. The greatest also thing, there was a time where like it took so much time to get in your cars and get around that that one time we had to go like a couple of blocks away and like there was an executive decision made that these guys, AMCPR guys, went out and bought flip-flops. Full on because no one knew, like recognized us we literally put on like flats, carried our shoes and walked two blocks to do another another interview because it was the best decision and the quickest way to get two blocks away. Right. Um, like but every the first time you could actually escape before you get. Like, yeah. Too yeah. 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 <laughs> we, they all determine. Oh, yeah, we can. No one's going to really recognize us right now. Yet. And also the fans. I think they're such huge fans of The Walking Dead that they just without with only seeing that clip they gave us so much love which speaks volumes for like that show and the fan base did you notice um with fear of the walking dead when it came out um you know with everything in the internet people are going to complain about something so the first two episodes a lot of the uh discussion online was this is too slow. It's taking forever. What's going on? But then that third episode hit and it goes completely a 180. Right. And now you're just speeding down through the course of the show. I'm like, oh, my God, I should have just kept my mouth shut. Right. This is really going somewhere. Um, I don't read. Um, I don't go online uh, to Very read smart. reviews, good or bad, even when I do plays, because I feel like if I give attention to the good ones, then that means I have to give attention to the bad ones. Um, And so I don't. But. But speaking of that, I think it was, it's inevitable. You know, it's such an enormous fan base that there absolutely are going to be people you're not going to make happy. You're going to end up with new fans. I, I've heard 
I've from all sorts of experiences, other actors on the show, people here, people in my life that either watch the regular show or never watch it and are watching it for different reasons that really like it for itself. So you're going to absolutely lose some fans that uh, that want that. Um, but you're going to gain other fans and, and I think it's its own thing and it's not competing. So, uh, you can't do anything about, you know, people's opinions as to it's moving slow. I love character based things that move slow, but that isn't one of our taglines when civilization ends, it ends quick. So it's about to go down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan of like the original Walking Dead and the graphic novels, and I love Fear the Walking Dead. I like the pace that it's taking because I felt like it was gonna. I was worried actually the opposite that it was gonna rush right into it, and we weren't gonna see society crumble. We weren't gonna see all of that, and I think it's pretty cool. And I think even like even in the last episode from this past week, when you're seeing everything starting to be vacant, like what was that like shooting in L.A.? Did you have to like clear people out or do things early in the morning, or is it like some CGI type effects to make everything look so empty? Ah, it's it's everything. It, you know, we were in a neighborhood that I think we like. You know, you pay the whole block to m- go to a hotel while you sort of use just the outside of the houses. Um, I think some of it was CGI. I think like when you see all the empty, ha- like in the back, I don't know how they did that. I was like, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, it was really cool. <laughs> like when all the lights got turned off, and that's episode before when we're driving in the truck, yeah, and, it's and like you, you see, see it the starts. Just yeah, down. that's CGI, and I was like, that's really incredibly spooky. And incredibly well done. Um, uh, we shot, it was interesting because we shot, we cross board. So we shot two episodes at a time. And so we also shot a bunch of it in Canada and then came back to California to finish all the exteriors. And so there was never a feeling of a complete episode. So I never felt like I knew what happened from beginning to end. Mm-hmm. Um and s- until I watch them and it comes together. I forget how many scenes I'm in in episodes and all of a sudden mm-hmm. I'm like, "Oh my goodness, this was really like you do not remember what piece you shot for what episode." It's like binge watching in a way. You're like, "Oh my god, when was that episode?" <laughs> oh, oh, you're seeing it come together and it's this complete thing and you haven't remembered it being complete since you read it the first time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Well, in episodes three and four, it, they put you in a situation which uh, you don't really get to see a character uh, be put in where you're the ex-wife with your ex-husband and his current wife and his current family, and you're forced to be together despite it being a crisis. That doesn't take away from the fact that uh, even though, you know, the end of the world is coming, that it's like you still have s- certain little things that you just can't get over as far as human relations go? Um, I think in that situation, uh, my backstory was that I'm the one that left him, which made me really, really happy so that it wasn't sort of the, you know, obvious go to, oh, you know, the, 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 the scorn ex-wife or the la, la, la. And, you know, uh, there, that's his girlfriend and her family. And I feel like because they're both mothers, there is empathy. Uh, I think, you know, just being under the same roof, you know, it becomes about what do you say? What don't you in any circumstance when you're under someone's roof? It's also like, you know, Salazar and, and Travis, you know, there's these two alpha males and they're dealing with other things as well as to who's going to be in charge and who knows more or whatever that that ends up being. So I think it was more that than resentments. I love, love, love. And I think it speaks volumes. The scene where, where she talks to me about Susan and she tells, you know, I talk, look, I know we're not friends, but you know, for the kids, this, that, and the other. Um, and I agree to this thing. I think it's, it's a, in that moment, it showed, I think, a mutual respect as women and the strengths of what we know Travis to be and what women are capable of doing you know of whether i'm really capable of doing it or not deciding that i will not let her i think speaks volumes to the respect i have as for her as a person and as a woman and vice versa for her to ask me yeah it's really good i really actually like the the double family dynamic and how it's working out and even with the last episode from this past week we could start to see where the divide is starting to happen because for the first couple episodes i was like all right how are they going to cohabitate with all these people in these families and then clear lines were starting to be drawn in the last episode right. where you can kind of see right. where things are going to split off. Like 
where is that possibly going to start taking us? Is it right. going gonna to get more tense in that right. kind of, I don't want to spoil anything, right. but is it going to get more tense with the family relationship? Well, the great thing is that like when I first read them, I was like, oh man, I don't have a lot to do with them. Like, how am I busy doing these things? And I think it was great that like, because Liza is a nursing student, she got to sort of find something to feed her and make her feel like she can do something in this time where we're just like waiting in this nine days and so she goes around the neighborhood doing the best she can and that becomes a little resentful for madison in terms of like she's left with playing the role of the w- w- woman of the house yeah. um but like by the end of it you know when she says liza did this yeah. i was like oh i actually wrote kim i was like Sorry. you know i was like i every time i watch i I love her so deeply, and I think one of the greatest, of everything I've done, one of the greatest uh, profound uh, gifts has been a friendship with her. Um, But um, I wrote her, she was like, I don't remember what happened in that episode. I was like, it ends with, and I quoted her, and she's like, she wrote back, oh, I was mad at Liza. (laughs) (laughs) That's what she wrote back. I love her so much, like... You know, and so, yeah, I know you at the end of that episode, you sort of like, ah, it was like, it was really like a brick wall. So you're like, oh, where's this going to go? And you're like, oh, crap. Like that escalated quickly. I'm not going (laughs) to tell you it happens, but I do redeem myself. Okay. (laughs) In my my childlike voice. We're getting down to the uh, very end of season one. It's a six episode run. Anything you can tell us going into the last episode? Does it without giving us? We have two more episodes. Yeah. Without giving a spoiler, does it? Follow the Walking Dead format of yeah. usually ending on a cliffhanger, or is it going to be, we don't know what the future holds kind of ending? I think it's going to be both. It's going to be, the, I don't think, I know it's going to be both. <laughs> I know, I'm like, I think, um, I know that it's going to end, there's going to be surprises, and there's definitely going to be also, I don't know what the world holds for them. What do you know about season two, then? That uh, that they don't know anything. <laughs> that they have no idea. That right now, it's the the first episode hasn't been written. Oh, so you're still waiting on uh for to get that call saying okay, we start filming on this. Date. No, you, they sort of know when they start filming, and and the writers are now like they breaking story, and they're now starting to write their outlines. But that's what I know that they they don't even know where it's shooting. So uh. So far, I guess, in this universe, because it's, I mean, it's the same, like, Walking Dead universe. You haven't been able, to, you haven't been covered in blood and guts yet. Are you, are you been very happy about that? Or do you want to just be completely soaked from Walker blood yet? Well, there's moments that happen in the next few episodes. It's weird. It's sort of like, I have a lot of testosterone. I'm like a 14 year old tomboy. And so there's a lot of me that, like, there's scenes in the next episode where, all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, my goodness, I'm in an action film. And I loved, love that. Like, there's, like, huge production days. And I'm just like, this feels like a total, like, $100 million action film. And so that was exciting. I mean, you know, you want to do it. It all f- sounds like a good idea till you're in it. And then you're like, this is gross. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can just imagine in the heat of L.A. as opposed to just just as bad as Georgia. It's got to yeah. be not fun, covered in sticky blood. I think I think George, nothing beats the sticky world and the the wood of Georgia. I, yeah. From what I've heard from uh, on like from per- people I know on the show. So do you have like a lot of communication with the other cast members? Are they like, hey, don't take the, you know, the mojo away from us? No, we we met, we saw each other at, at Comic Con and didn't see each other after, haven't seen each other. They were in middle shooting. Um, they were really, really supportive and lovely, um, and open and just wonderful people, which I think comes from the top. It trickles down from, you know, a president of AMC, Charlie, and, and just all the way down, I think. Um, and, uh, they're very, very adamant in letting people know that we're we're not competing. Yeah. We're not the same show. Um, we're a prequel, and so there is none of that. Um, so if they did have that, I'd be like, mm, we're not. This, we're, no one's told you. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're so not that. You know, we're not. It, it it wasn't. I don't think we ever felt like they were gonna come and feel that way. Um, and they didn't. They were really lovely and supportive. Um, and, and excited because I think they, you know, while they're filming in Atlanta, they're hearing th- what's going on because we have a lot of the same producers. So they get to hear what's going on with us 
or whatever personal stories people are sharing, which I hope we were behaved well enough yeah. <laughs> to make them go, yeah, they're good people, they're not a-holes, or whatever. You know what I mean? Oh, definitely. So, um, obviously, with Fear the Walking Dead right now uh, being as popular as it is, people recognize you from this show. But, <clears throat> excuse me. But uh, before that, uh, people knew you from uh, uh, All My Children, and then going, <laughs> and then going into Orange is the New Black. When you're out on the street or somebody recognizes you, what do you get recognized for the most? Right now, I still get recognized the most for Orange. I, I think um, um, it's inter- it's so weird, like the randomness. Like you know, we were we had a we were in Canada with a hidden name, a covert operation in the middle of nowhere, no one's supposed to know. And I get a piece of fan mail, and the piece of fan mail is from America, and I'm like, how did I get this here? I open it up, and it's a picture of a character I play on Grimm. <laughs> 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 Did I have a small recurrent? I was like, what? It's that random. Dear like, Agent Chavez, please sign yeah, this in return. I, that's what it was. I was like, you guys, look included. what I got to Fear the Walking Dead, a piece of fan mail from Grimm. That's it was awesome. like amazing. See like, you at your hotel. But the <laughs> only piece of fan mail I got there was for Grimm. I don't, I can't even imagine how that happened. Um... I Someone was like, this will freak her out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like the other day, somebody mentioned, like walked by me. Mostly it's orange still. Um, uh, I think because it's been four years, so people know me more. And I think the more they see the next two episodes, you know, my character is still being developed. So there's more of me per episode, or at least different parts of me, different experiences. So I think people by the end of the sixth episode will have different feelings, you know. But I think they've been with Aleda more than they've been with anybody else, so... Because um, <clears throat> besides all of that, I mean, you've had an extensive career here. I just want to point out some of the major projects that you've been a part of because it's very impressive. Um, for as far as movies go, I forgot, and, and I went back and looked at it. You're in Miami Vice, right? I Did you see that. me in that I, little like Clint Eastwood moment I right? had there? Uh, you, you were in Blow, and this part I didn't, I couldn't find you, but I saw you listed for Desperado. It's not me. Do not believe. This is a good thing that you brought this up. People out there in the world do not believe everything you read on the Internet. <laughs> the things on IMDb are not always your credits. And you have no idea how hard it's been to try to get that off of my Internet, <laughs> off of my IMDb. The thing is that Robert Rodriguez assist, has a sister that has the same name as me. And I think he gave her a small part in Desperado. So for years... In years, I'd show up places and people would be like, I love your brother. I'm like, that's not my brother, dude. <laughs> I, if he was, I wouldn't be doing working here. You should public. Kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that I'm not. That's good because I'm not in Desperado. I don't even. I, I mean, because you should be claiming royalties then. If yeah, and I, I would have been like, you better put me in all your movies. Yeah. But like, and I wouldn't have had to gone back to working in, in as a bartender for so many years in between things I've done. But I'm not in Desperado, and there's like one other credit on there. That that is also not mine. Well, let's see if uh, if it's one of these here. Because listen to this. Listen to this list that she's been involved with. Six feet under. Me. Okay. Oz. Me. NYPD Blue. Me. ER. Me. Third Watch. Me. The Shield. Me. Prime Suspect. Me. Law and Order. Me. Which is awesome because she's three different roles over the span of five years. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then welcome to Law and Order. <laughs> um, and then you did Law and Order SVU. Yes. Which is awesome. Um, of course, all my children. Me. You were on Power on Stars. Yes. And, you know, Grimm, yeah. as you said. Yeah, the rest of them are me. Else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's like something like golf balls or something. We filmed it. I'm like, what is that? Who is that? What is that? <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I, I don't even know if his sister is still acting, but, you know, she's obviously a SAG member, and so they put they lumped them all together. You should just send a notice to SAG and just say, oh, there's been a change of address. Please send all checks to yeah. here. And Except for the fact spend- that if she is not acting, they'd be sending my checks to her. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, damn it. That's right. <laughs> it's like reverse Columbia House. Yeah. yeah, she's the only one that would benefit from that, other than, I hope, from her brother. <laughs> yeah. uh, season, besides, uh, we know that there's going to be a season two for Fear the Walking Dead. Right. Uh, what else? Uh, what other projects do you have in the works? I'm in the middle of finishing the fourth season of Orange. We're halfway through shooting that. So that's kind of it right now. Um, I've been doing a lot of 
just purging and like in my apartment, I've just been spending a lot of time at home. I don't know if it's because I just experienced this like intense apocalyptic thing or <laughs> as much work as I did. Um, I've, I ended up doing another episode of Grimm that should be out really soon. And that sort of wraps up that story in a really fun kind of great way. Um, and I don't know what else I'm going to have. I guess more of these things. You Not know. a bad thing to have. Yeah. No, a really, 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 really good thing to have. It's a, an embarrassment of riches right now. One other thing I wanted to point out uh, with Orange is the New Black is the everything is very clicky in this prison here. You know, you have the black girls, the white girls, the religious girls, the, the Spanish girls. The meth heads. <laughs> the meth heads. The old timers. The Spanish girls are the prettiest ones in the whole system there. And <laughs> that's very they sweet make, of you. All the other cliques do all the nude scenes, and the Spanish girls, who are the most attractive ones, don't have to really do any of them. I think that has to do... I think it's hysterical that they do that. But I think it has to do with not being on contract. So, the first (laughs) season, there were four people that were series regulars, so I don't know who decided that who needed to be naked and who didn't and how that was worked out. And then the second season, they added another bunch of women, more of the black women, um... I made them series regular, so I guess that was part of their contract. Like, now nah, you we'll get give paid. you full time, but you got well, to sign to this. Yeah, <laughs> and so I think what happened is there was a moment in the second season for me where I had, or the first season, I don't remember, to blur, where I come on to Matt, to the guard, and like full on, it was like nude, you should, and I, it became this huge thing, like, I'm, I, no, that's not happening. I never signed up for this. <laughs> um, and so that it's sort of that it's, I think it's not randomness. I think it's more of like mo- a lot of us are recurs. And so we were not, um, I'm like, I don't know about we, I can only talk about me. I'm like, yeah. that's not going down like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't, I didn't think it, uh, of it as being random. I just noticed that it's like, okay, here that's are the so really funny. attractive girls. <laughs> We're not going to make them get naked. Let's all the awkward ones and and the really you know, like. There's some of the attractive ones that women that do get naked. I've seen some sexy women get naked, but but right. it doesn't have the uh, the feel of Oz, right? Where right, of course. there was just random dudes naked right, for no right, right, reason right, right. just because it was Oz. Yeah, no, ours I think has to do with who's on contract and who's a recur <laughs> and who's willing to do what. On a I thought basis. it was just to keep people stringing them along. The like, eventually, they're going to get to the really hot girls. Eventually, one season, all of them will be naked. I personally, if it gets to that with me, I would need to know, have at least six weeks in advance to full on do a cleanse <laughs> and, and like work my butt off for that five seconds of camera. I am not kidding. They know that's not that doesn't happen. Like that's not today. I don't have that today. I'm not camera ready. Well, if you go the uh, the progression of people on Walking Dead in a season or two, you're going to be so ripped and jacked from totally. like having to fight zombies. You're not even gonna have to worry about. I that. know, I know. <laughs> That's what happened in Miami Vice. I had six weeks of training leading up to the principal day of photography, and I was in like the in most insane shape of my life. Yeah, that's all you have to do for when you fin- when you if they get a season five for Orange, right. you just go. Let me do season two of, of uh, Walking Dead. Walking uh, Dead. They're getting me a trainer. Right. Then we'll discuss right. for season five. Totally, totally. So with all these different shows you work on, do you have to travel a lot for filming? Because I know like Orange is the New Black films in Brooklyn a lot, and then Fear the Walking Dead and seems it, like it's it like films LA. In Queens a lot. It's and, actually I travel so little. to I live really close okay. to Kaufman Astoria, so okay. that's an amazing uh, just happenstance. Uh, Fear shot in Vancouver and in LA, and then Grimm shoots in Portland, and then I have a I had a small recur. I don't know if I'm coming back. On um, power and that shoots in Brooklyn and Steiner. Um, so yeah, I do have to travel all over the place. Um, it's, it, it, you know, it's kind of, it has its great things and it has its challenging things of like just exhaustion, but, um, it's all good. I, you know, it, these are like, we I'm just embarrassed to even say, like complain about any of it. I'm like, the truth of the matter is actors will for, live in Japan. I like, yeah. it doesn't even matter where. <laughs> To do great work. Yeah, and you're traveling from hit show to hit show to hit show. It's really not a, a chore. <laughs> no, and I've been really blessed with working with like cast and crews that are wonderful, wonderful units. And so I'm just sort of like, really? That Yeah, I'm like, that's just the icing on the cake. That's awesome. Yeah. What do you do in your downtime when you're not shooting all of these things? Tell you, I don't leave the apartment. <laughs> 
been I, the, I do, and I also like late, lately. I've been just. Is I Netflix came ac- the last thing you want to watch? Sometimes I don't go on Netflix because it overwhelms me, like to see Orange come up. But when it's I did right on finish- the front page. Like, yeah, ugh, I, I finished. <laughs> I, I finished watching The Honorable Woman. That's an eight part series that I wanted to watch, which was amazing. I watched in three days. Um, when I was shooting, um, Fear, I watched four seasons of The Killing. Oh, nice. Because it was shooting in the same studio and I always wanted to watch it. So I wanted to see that. Um, I stay kind of dark. I don't, you know, um, there's a, I want to see Bloodline and like AMC has a bunch of new shows that are coming up, but I like being able to see a couple of seasons. So like, you know, I, it's weird. Like right now, like one hour is not enough almost. You have to watch like, it's almost like watching a film, like two and a half, three hours. So three, yeah. three episodes is a good sort of block of like, time to watch something but sometimes it becomes four or five in one night well if you're looking for something dark to watch on netflix i would highly recommend black mirror if you haven't seen it oh my god i heard all about it it's like the sci-fi twilight zone it's crazy i heard i heard craziest shows ever. i'm going to i heard about that it's two short seasons is the christmas special up there now okay there's two short seasons and then there's a christmas special after the second season that stars john ham from uh from mad men amazing oh that's great i heard about that show um, but, um, yeah, I do that. And then I do a lot of cleaning and nesting at home. Like I just found a recipe to make this real simple, like tomato sauce because tomatoes are in season <laughs> in like August and September. And they're like the cheapest. And I've already made the, the small batch tomato sauce where you end up with two and a half cups. I've made three batches in a week. <laughs> I'm like, I think this is going to be a problem. So I have a freezer full of sauce, which becomes premeditated to eating pasta. Because what else are you going to do with your pasta sauce? Bring yeah. it to the prison. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I do. Uh, there's Liz with her jars again. Yeah, and I go, you know, I try to see theater and sort of support people and spend time with, like, my friends that I hardly get to see. Well, um, you, you've you done um, a, a, a lot of theater. Uh, so you've done movies, you've done television, and you've done some th- and theater. Which out of the three genres do you enjoy the most? Or is acting just acting? Um, they all have uh, challenges, and they all have great things about them um i enjoy all of them um i think when you when you guest star in something it's kind of the most difficult because it's a machine you're going into and and you sort of like going in to fill a job that so basically when you audition you're probably 90 percent of the characters already down so there's no space for you you know you don't get 17 takes <laughs> you have to come in fully prepared and like you know and be the best and help them Mm -hmm. um plays you know there's a lot of variables you hope that you have a great director that can get you to to be the best that you can that you get along with the whole cast in that situation if there's somebody that's crazy you you've seen them eight shows a week plus you're spending so much time rehearsing with them that then you it, it can be a little you know off where they can affect you in a way that it's live so there's no magic of editing it could be someone that like rubs you and you have scenes with them. You better figure it out and protect yourself so that you can do that. And sometimes you can't. Sometimes there's no chemistry and films are these machines that sometimes you, you know, you're waiting days. They call you in, you go back home. They call you in. They, that one you definitely get paid to wait the most. Yeah. So which out of that is your favorite? I don't have a favorite. Um, I don't have a favorite. I think maybe. Films because I haven't done enough of them. I want, you know, I'd like to do more films, but the parts in films are smaller. And I think now that I have like regular parts, they're more complete. So you feel more, there's more gratification in doing something like a Leda that becomes a real character because now she lives inside me fully the way a play does. I think for the longest time a play was because you really get to fully live and create a character. And it's and, very intimate too. And also really dimensional of this character and bring her as fully to life as possible where in films you'll have a smaller part. And a lot of times in TV you have a smaller part. But um, right now, um, my favorite is television. <laughs> it's AMC. <laughs> yes, of course. Fear the Walking Dead. I, Sunday nights, 9 yes, p.m. on AMC. Liza. Well, AMC's got great stuff. Like 
Oh yeah. my goodness! Yeah, like, All their best. stuff is like character driven, so incredible, so different. And they I have just, new stuff coming up. Yeah, I just saw the trailer for I think it's like into like the Borderlands or or Badlands, whatever it is. Badlands. Which yeah, looks like a Ninja Game of Thrones type thing. It looks pretty awesome. It's insane. Mm. I had someone that was working on it. It's like a giant, giant, giant endeavor, and that yeah. trailer looks amazing, right? Yeah, it seems like it seems like it's a really big just world. Like yeah. I, I got a really just grand sense of what it's going to be yeah. just on that two-minute And I trailer. love me some martial arts stuff. Yeah. So that, I was like, oh, oh. So and when I, do we see you in it? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. That's going to be a lot. <laughs> she finds the government's secret t- time prob- portal. Uh, the chances the are out. I probably will not be in that show. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, we're running out of time with you. Uh, before you got the, the role in Fear the Walking Dead, uh, were you familiar with Walking Dead? Were you watching the show? Did you go back and maybe read any of the comics to find out the story? No, uh, I was familiar with the show. I had friends that were on the show. I'd seen it on and off. Um, I did not read. The, a, I had no time. None of us really had time to read, uh, uh, the comics and they weren't, uh, they weren't affecting our story and the story we were going to say directly. Um, so it was basically about die. I had just finished doing a play in, a, in LA. And so I was about trying to find Liza as soon as possible and be as prepared as I could possibly be with the short amount of time I had. And so it was basically about like, who is she? what story are we telling in one episode per episode? So it became about what's going on in the scene. It became about scene to scene and like spending some time with the director talking about our backstory and getting to know each other as best we could. And then it just sort of evolved. And we just sort of like worked with like the basics of being truthful to the story we were telling and figuring out our character. Now with the uh, in between seasons coming up, um, would you go and watch Walking Dead, or do you feel that might compromise what you're doing? I don't think it'll compromise what I'm doing. I'm looking forward to to watching it. You know what else I've never seen that I have to see, but it's so many episodes. But I'm afraid I'll get nothing done in my life. The Sopranos. Oh, Sopranos. Oh, Sopranos is a great one too. I know. Everyone's like, you've not. Seen. I'm like, I know, I know, I know. So many people, I know, but it's so many years. It's like we're opening up Moby Dick. It's like <laughs> that's a lot of pages. Yeah, that's a, someone told me the same thing. They're like, oh, you should watch Lost. I'm like, I don't have 180 hours. Yeah. That I could schedule. <laughs> like out the right idea now of that causes yeah. me trauma. Exactly. Like, because like, I know that, like, like, once I open it, I'm gonna be like, I do not call. I don't. I can't do anything. I'm not showering. I'm not doing anything for weeks at a time. So I just have one last quick question. Mm-hmm. So I know that they said that there's going to be a plain Walking Dead like spinoff, like one episode type thing. I don't know if you read about this online that there's going to be like an outbreak on a plane, and that they're going to be doing like a one episode like. Oh, spin-off. wasn't that something that they did? These commercial people created these little commercials. Yeah, it's a web series. Oh, it's a web series because there, uh, there was a shot in one of the episodes where Nick saw like a plane. And yeah, it was, like, kind of tilting. And they I didn't thought, know like, if that was like going to be related. It, it was this that. web series. It was t- sounded amazing. Right? Like they had people like br- bring in like ideas and then they did one, right? Into like a a, a whole, is it going to be a full web series? I, yeah. That would be, <laughs> that would be my AMC lovely, amazing PR person, Brian. <laughs> he knows things I don't know. Yeah, sure. Oh my God, that's Go exciting. That. Oh no, the military is going to come and take me away now for asking that question. <laughs> it's a web series. <laughs> okay, cool. Are we not allowed to eat too much? We can't talk about we can't talk about it. Oh, they're gonna old yell at us. <laughs> yeah. Well anyway, Fear the Walking Dead is uh Sundays, nine PM on AMC. What it's it's it, it's done. It's getting there. Yeah. We're we're reaching the end here, people, so you gotta check this out. I, I can feel it. It's it's building up to something really good. I'm not even like feigning being excited. I'm watching it for the first time with the audience. So I full on go home and get like, ah. See, I'm already getting aggravated because I know it's going to build up and then it's just going to stop. And then season six of Walking Dead comes on the following week. Right. And, and then, then we got to wait till next year for season two. Yeah. And I'm going to spend, what, six months just being really pissed off. Yeah. 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 But you'll be enjoying it, loving it. But like, damn it. They, I knew this was going to happen. Yeah. But I you'll fell be for fi- it again. the idea is to be really f- filled with the other one and there'll be 52 at some point there'll be 52 weeks of walkers people that right. is what amc is doing worldwide it's gonna be like all my zombie children like that's it <laughs> it's just gonna be one and then the next and then well, back we're and in back. georgia i'm gonna be like but what happened to los angeles and then we yeah. get to los angeles what's going on in georgia well, probably not <laughs> by like the second episode in georgia you'll be like oh uh, 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 la was so far away that feels like such a long time ago yeah <laughs>
That's just going to happen. We're wrapping up here. Final thing. Do you think they're making uh, any kind of uh, merchandising for Fear the Walking Dead? Are you going to have an action figure? I don't know who makes those decisions. Because that's um, when you know you've really made it, when you have your own action figure that you can annoy your family with on Christmas by sending everybody a copy of your Well, we all did go through all these amazing machines to get like 100,000 pictures of our bodies taken. It was the most incredible thing, which I was like, this is for an action fit, which seemed really They surreal. said that, but it's really for the nude scenes for uh, yeah. Orange is the which, New Black. Which, fine, take it. <laughs> CGI it. Take it on. Bring She's it just going to smile politely and we'll put somebody else's totally. body there. Totally. I'm all for it. It'll make me be able to eat, like, my pasta sauce <laughs> with my pasta. Elizabeth, thank you so much. It's E. Rodriguez on Twitter. Yes. And uh, Instagram, too. Uh, the only Elizabeth Rodriguez, which, of course, is because there's thousands of us. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of a common name. Don't yes. Are yes. No, <laughs> at, at the only Elizabeth Rodriguez on Instagram. Yeah, no relation to Robert, though I'm assuming he's very talented and a great guy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Fear the Walking Dead again, Sunday, 9 p.m. on AMC. We're at the end here, people. You need to see it. If you haven't, you want to skip it, I get it. It'll be all on On Demand and binge watch everything. And, of yes. course, uh, Orange is the New Black is on Netflix Yes. As well. Thank you so much. Thank you. When uh, the other st- when the cycle comes up again for either of those shows or a brand new project, please come back oh, and uh, see us sometime. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Welcome back to It's Eric Nagel. 866-969-1969 is the phone number. Uh, before we get into everything else, we have two pairs of tickets to the live event for Back to the Future at Radio City Music Hall October 15th. I believe is the date that we have these pairs for here. So we have two pairs. If you want that, give us a call, and uh, we'll, we will hook you up with that. Uh, keep the song going a little bit, Lewis. The reason why we're playing this is because Matt turned me on to some interesting Star Wars news. Yeah. That had to do with the Beastie Boys. That's, that's right. So apparently, I guess J.J. Abrams um, is a big Beastie Boys fan. And so he uh, he named one of the new aliens in the upcoming film. Paul Revere. Uh, yes, Paul Revere. Um, <laughs> he, he named it Elo Asti, which is, nice. uh, uh, you know, he removed the H and the N from Hello Nasty to come up with the character name. And then there was another picture that, it, that that's not there, but um, actually there's a picture of the card art for the figure. And it actually says "Born to Ill" on his helmet. That's awesome. In that like rebel, like kind of uh, language, writing. whatever yeah. that is. But like... you, you could see it, right? I mean, now that you know what it says. You oh yeah, can totally. See it. Well, yeah, I was like, that's when when I was looking at the other one you had on his uh, on the screen before. I was like, that looks like letters, but I can't really read it. But now that I see what it is, I probably could. And the new cantina is now called Paul's Boutique. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So who knew? Uh, who knew? Beastie Boys now uh, now part of the Star Wars universe. Well, there you go. Sure. Star Wars As is still months away, and uh, we're already so oversaturated. Uh, while I was in Florida uh, this past week, I happened to just go to the store, get some yeah. bottled waters and things. And as I walk past the dairy section, it's up on my Instagram, E Rock Radio, and I'll tweet it on uh, it's Eric Nagel on Twitter. There, they did custom bottles for Coffee Mate. Oh yeah, I've seen those. Yeah. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. I feel like the Star Wars marketing is like trumping Kiss marketing right now. Like but you're yeah. gonna be able to get like a Han Solo coffin, like no problem. People Aww. are just it, people are gonna yeah, be sick of the movie it. before it even comes out. <laughs> no, and I, and I, and I'll tell you why. Because even though you have all of this merchandise, you still know nothing about the movie. the The movie is two months away. Two and a half months away? Yeah. 78 days or something like that. And you still don't really know anything about the movie. And then earlier this week, um, someone from the Star Wars camp, I don't know if it was J.J. Abrams or if it was someone from Hasbro or, or, or Kathleen Kennedy might have even sent it, but she said anything that you've seen so far as far as characters and, and anything you think you know about the story the based on what lie? you've seen. No. Oh, but it's, oh, it's there like, it is. It's like the first third. Is It's the first third of the film. Okay. So nothing has been leaked past that, or or you've seen no imagery from anything from the last two thirds of the film. So it'd be great. Still the, very mysterious. Wouldn't it be great? The next wave of promotion is just give away the ending. That's and it. It's like, We're not telling you the <laughs> middle of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I find that sure. There's this guy, and then he dies. But how does he get there? <laughs> well, I find lots of shows and like stuff do that now with like the adverts. They they show so much stuff, and then you actually see the thing, and it's like, oh, that was all only the first five minutes of this. Well, 
Right. And we'll Unlike s- the Terminator trailer, which gave you everything in the movie, and then you go see the movie and go, there was nothing left to yeah. be surprised about. And J.J. James and J.J. Abrams, I can't speak tonight at all. Oh it's my okay. God, it's I'm tongue tied. J.J. Um, Abrams is historically kind of uh, secretive about his movies. He doesn't like to give away too much in the trailer, and I actually applaud him for that. Like, yeah. I, I like the fact that he wants me to actually enjoy the movie for the first time on the mm-hmm. screen. What, like the first trailer I had ever seen for Jurassic Park when it when before it came into theater. All it was was a footprint. And I was like, that's it. I'm sold. That's it. That's all, I need footprint. Like, that's all I needed to see. The roar. It was <laughs> the roar and the footprint. That was, that it. was it. I was like, sold. Yep. Like, you know, good marketing. It's, mm-hmm. You don't need a lot. Well, can leave people guessing. Uh, continuing talking about the marketing here, I have the photo up. It's up on uh, its Eric Angle on Twitter. What does Wookie Spiced <laughs> Latte taste like? <laughs> I don't know. And then there's, you know, Ooh. C3PO Hazelnut, Ugh. R2 French Vanilla. And, uh, Aw, Boba Fett is Italian sweet cream, which is just racist. <laughs> hey, it's a Boba. <laughs> hey. It's a Boba Fett. So, the, so that's there, but then <laughs> as I'm walking around, I see this. Ugh. I yeah. saw, you know what? I saw those at uh, Forbidden Planet this week. Uh, we're looking at a photo of, they brought back the Furby, yep, which Furbaca. at one point in time was probably the thing to get for Christmas one year. Mm-hmm. They brought it back as uh, Chewbacca. So, and not only that, he's playing a Furby app on its cell phone right now. The the Furby in that picture. So I saw this back in February Furbaca. when Hasbro had yeah. their press event for Toy Fair. They actually presented this, and this was like this was like the big reveal. Like they were like, you guys Furbaca. are not going to believe what we have next, right? <laughs> and like as media, and this was a, an event just for collectors media. So it's. Guys just like me who care nothing about like this, right? And so we're all sitting around like, what is the big reveal? Everybody's thinking it's going to be episode seven related. And they pulled back the curtain to show for Baca and the room. It was crickets. It was like, are you fucking kidding? This is the reveal. And then it did. God, I can't talk now. Now I'm getting you. See? <laughs> then it did a quick jump scene like The Simpsons, and all of a sudden there's a riot and fire, and cars are flipped over. <laughs> Practically. Um, uh, since you're talking about the rare collective stuff, uh, Pit Doc in New York. Sup, man? You want to talk about collector stuff for the movie? Actually, I want to ask you guys a question. Sure. Uh, first Friday, about a month ago, I walked in. I knew exactly why I don't want again. I walked into the Apple store that day and bought two of the uh, BB-8s, uh, the, the Sphero BB-8s. Nice. For my niece and one, her, my grandnieces and everything like that. Turns out I didn't know if she, they wanted them much. She wants them for her kids. But I have a second one. I figured for the first time I'm going I'm to sell something to make up for the, the cost of the darn thing. The question was, I should have done this a couple weeks ago, but it was working. Uh, when should I sell it? Now or should I sell it right between the time of the movie opening up and Christmas coming up? Or are they going to make too many of them for it to me to not be able to turn any kind of a profit on them? I mean, honestly, you'll pro- you might make a little bit of a profit on them. But um, when they first came out that first week, weekend when you couldn't actually get them maybe you would have done okay but i think they're starting to resurface again and i don't think that there's a limited run on them at this time so I, yeah i was wondering sure if it was a yeah. limited run or not no. so i was wondering if after the movie came out every little rich kid's gonna want one of them or I, not so. you know collectibles are so hard these days they're no. not they're not worth what they're used what they used to be uh, i'm yeah. thinking of a way that he could probably turn a profit and it's not by ebay and, and, and any of those mess uh, selling sites, you probably could make good money off it by going a little old fashioned and post it like on Craigslist or uh, the Penny Saver if your town has it there because somebody's going to see it and yeah. like, oh my God, he's got one. Christmas is coming up. I need to get it for my kid. And you might be able to, you know, swindle a few bucks for yourself. That's, that's if you well, if you want to do it that around way. Around here is pretty poor, though. That's why it's kind of kind of hard for me to do up here. That's why I was thinking of going to eBay or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, start the, burning houses. No, look, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> look, go go to eBay. Put in BB-8 Sphero. Check the completed auctions. Yeah, I was going for about 220 bucks, yeah. which is better than nothing, you know, everything like that. Uh, went up right about a week or two after they came out. I'm not sure what they are now, but I'm wondering if after the movie, if it hits big, you know, they'll they'll sell out again real quick well, or not. So, so here's the gamble. If BB-8 is Jar Jar Binks... It won't be worth a penny. <laughs> that if BB-8 true. is huge, it might be worth something. Then I have my own BB-8. So there you go. You have to gamble. I think That's he'll true. be huge, but it's up to you. Uh, yeah. Pit okay. Doc, we got to uh, run here and move on, but uh, where in New York are you? I'm in uh, northern New York. I see. I come and see Ron all the time for, for his show. Okay. Uh, would you like a pair of uh, tickets to the Back to the Future live event on October 15th at Radio City Music Hall? October 15th. Uh, unfortunately, I don't... Wait a minute. See, what day is that? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a Thursday, Thursday yeah. I think. I uh, can't make it. 
All right. Uh, you should have taken them and sold them on eBay. <laughs> yeah, really? Okay. I'd rather you give it to somebody who could use them. That's They're cool. You're an honest editions. man. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put you on hold. I'll give you a copy of uh, Furious 7, the extended edition on Blu-ray DVD and digital download. All right? Give that away, too. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice to this guy. All right. Final offer. I'm trying to buy your love. Do you want a copy of Tremors 5 Bloodlines? I know the answer is no. I'm going to put you on hold. You got my love anyway, guys. All Thanks right. Thanks, Thanks Pit Dog. I'll talk to you later. I'll all take right. all of his prizes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to uh, Carly in Brooklyn. Carly. Hey. Hi. How are you? Ooh, it's I a girl. <laughs> the what? I'll take all the things that he didn't want. Sold. <laughs> okay, you got a pair of tickets to the live event at Back to the, uh, for Back to the Future at the Radio City Music Hall. Well, at the, the at Radio I City Music Hall. Just ask for the thing. <laughs> yes, because we're running out of time, and I got to give a lot of this stuff away. <laughs> so you got Congrats. a pair of tickets for October fifteenth to see the live event of Back to the Future at Radio City Music Hall. Oh, I'm so excited. Thanks, man. Okay, I'm going to put you on hold, and uh, Lewis will get your information. Congrats, Carly. Congrats. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, wait, Matt in Cleveland. Matt, what's up? Hey, what's up, dude? Hey. Hey, I was originally calling for the tickets, the Back to the Future, but you were talking about the coffee, mate. How are you going to go if you're in Cleveland? I, I, I travel. My agent, my ad agency's in New York, too, so I travel there all the time. Do you want the tickets? I mean, I would love them. All right, let's see how the call goes first. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you're, no pressure. Well, uh, you already called me out on Instagram, but I, uh, I was actually one of the designers on those fucking titles. Right. I didn't believe him, and it turns out it was true. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. It's just weird you were talking about it as I was calling for the tickets, so. All but, right. Uh, yeah. It was a lot of fun to work on, though. I mean, I know they're stupid as shit, but they're, they were fun. I, I want the Boba Fett. Actually, there, there's an R2-D2 one, right? They're delicious, yeah. too. They're I need delicious. I need an R2 one for my astromech collection, so I'll be buying one. There you go. I recommend the Darth Vader one. It's awesome. There you go. Nice. All right. Um, Matt, I'm going to put you on hold, and we'll give you the other pair of... Uh, the Back to the Future live event at Radio City Music Hall, October 15th. Enjoy them, all right? Just made my day, man. Thank all right, you. No problem. Thank you for calling. Tell two friends, my friend. What flavor is Darth Vader? Like the dark side Chai. coffee? I feel like you just have your coffee black. <laughs> it's really chocolate cow. <laughs> chocolate cow. Oh, all right, we got, we got to go uh, take another break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk to Zachary Levi, star of uh, Heroes Reborn on NBC. He also has a show on sci-fi called Geeks Who Drink. And uh, has a brand new nerd clothing line called the Nerd Machine, Nerd HQ. Check all that stuff out as we talk to him next. Be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome to the show right now. Of course, you've known this gentleman from his series, Chuck. But you're about to rediscover him again in uh, Heroes Reborn on NBC. Say hello to Zachary Levi. Can I call you Zach? Oh, yeah. Zach, Zachary, Zachary, Zachary Schmucko, Poopy Pants, okay. Stumpy Bomb, whatever. Well, because you would think... The Zachary part would be the part where people are like, do I call him Zachary? Do I call him Zach? Other people sometimes is like, is it like Levy, like Eugene Levy, or is it Levi? Oh, Levi. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Levi. that's definitely the, the more confusing part because it, it's. Um, I mean, my actual last name is Pew. It's Welsh, but my Levi's my middle name. So I've been going by Zachary Levi professionally for a long time, and and understandably, everyone thinks, oh, you're a good Jewish kid, and I'm like, I I feel like I'm deceiving you right now. Although I've been to Seder, I can't even tell you how many times. Like because <laughs> everybody in my like my agent, my manager, my lawyer, you know, that they're, they're all right. Everybody. Everybody in Hollywood's uh, Jewish. Everyone who controls everything is Jewish. Um, everyone who controls my life in Hollywood is Jewish. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, so no, uh, and yeah, and Zach, I mean, you know, Zachary's like the professional, the professional, you know, title, I guess, but yeah. no, call me Zach. Zach, call me whatever right, you want, cool. just don't call me late for dinner. Ha, huh. did I, does, uh, <laughs> do, uh, people ever, when you started coming around, uh, uh, on the scene, as, uh, if you will, for TV and movies and whatnot, uh, with the name Levi, not knowing your real name, did they assume that you were maybe part of the, uh, the gene company? Like that was, you had family ties to that too? No, you know, every once in a while somebody asks me that and I'm like, no, although I wish that would, that would probably be very, be very lucrative. Sometimes people say, oh, your last name's Hunt. Any relation to the Hunt's, you know, oh, like Hunt's ketchup. Yeah. People always try to associate you to a fam dabbling. He's not really taking this oh, seriously. I see. Yeah, I guess there is something like that. I guess there is something like that. I think, I, I don't know. I, I wonder if, I've always kind of taken it, I, I just wonder if people are more intrigued. Like it's an added level of celebrity. Like right. they met somebody who was a Rockefeller or they met, they met somebody who was like a Vanderbilt or a Carnegie or something like that. Like I, anytime I've ever met anybody that has a last name that could, you know, be connected to something, I'm always peaked a little intrigued. Right. But I don't, I feel like there's not even, there's not even that many names that are so famous. Like if I ever met a Kardashian, yeah, I would ha I would have to ask, are you? 
And I would have to I would have to believe that you should ask them. <laughs> More chances are than not you're going to run into one of them somewhere at, yeah. at an event, and you can go up to you know like to Kylie or something like. Related to like Kim? Is that her sister? <laughs> and she'll just look at you like you're an asshole. <laughs> you know, I do. Speaking of, uh, speaking of the, they all dropped it. No, they were, and a lot of them were, because I grew up on Long Island, but, uh, a lot of them were on Long Island. There was, wait, what? There were people who had the last name Hitler, uh, before I was born, right? Like in the 60s and uh, yeah, yeah. 50s, 60s, 70s and there. And, uh, yeah, you can look up in like Newsday articles and things like that of the, these families that had to change their name. Oh, because full of on, dude. What was going on? But my surprise was that you waited till the 60s? Like that, that <laughs> war ended in the 40s. You think that would have been were, the first thing you they did? They were hoping they could slide through. Well, look, hey, Hitler, fine. We're not related to that. I'm not registering What's to vote. What's with the mustache though, Tim? <laughs> I'm not registering to vote. I don't have a library card. We're going to skim yeah, on this. Yeah, no, yeah. we got to change <laughs> no, it. No, we got to change it. Got 20 it. more years out of it, but yeah. it's got to go. Yeah. Um, let me uh, just set the, uh, set the plate here for people who uh, may not know who you are. Uh, the show Chuck on NBC mm-hmm. was a unique take at something sort of like it was a little James Bondish. It was a little uh, Mission Impossible. It was all these kind of spy things put together in an unlikely uh, way where it was programmed into your head. Yeah. And you worked at the uh, like a Best Buy equivalent. Yeah, the Buy More. Just a regular yeah. guy working a regular job, and then all of a sudden you became uh, one of the most important weapons to the United States government. Exactly. Um, this show, um, like a lot of shows, I guess was struggling when it started, but then it hit its groove, and even though it wasn't getting the full mainstream it had such a following that people yeah. were so dedicated to this show yeah yeah it was uh, it was an incredible experience man i mean we came out um i mean television is it's so weird because you know i mean even up until let's say the early 2000s right um television still was pretty strong you know you could have a show and have pretty massive ratings right but all of a sudden, kind of all at once, you had this convergence of cable was really starting to hit a stride with its own kind of original programming. And uh, the Internet was kind of providing, you know, even if it was just like YouTube distraction at that point, it was still something. And then clearly DVR, which was the really the biggest thing, because now all of a sudden live numbers just didn't mean what they meant anymore. Right. So live viewership which is really the only way you can kind of successfully monetize network television was just dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping and nobody knew what to do and so we kind of came out we premiered on chuck uh in 2007 and so that was that was kind of you know like it was really five years into the already decline the kind of you know uh the sinking network number ship that right. that was the juggernaut for so long and they didn't know what to do nobody really knew what to do but we did have this really incredibly passionate fan base this you know some might call a cult following even though i think it's a bit bigger than a super culty niche following right but regardless they they were really passionate about the show they fought for us i mean we were on the chopping block every year almost got canceled every year uh, well see that was the point i wasn't saying like it was a super niche kind of show i, I meant it in the fact that in, compared to the whole mainstream thing and network television still sort of being what it was back then not yeah. what it is now but uh your show on nbc major network wasn't really um, measuring up compared to some of the other shows that were on, on, the, oh, on yeah, the networks. No. Oh, I but don't you disagree had with such you. a fan base that kept this thing coming back. 100%. Because there was enough people that made it financially uh, worthwhile for the network and the production companies to keep bringing Chuck back because people loved it. No, 100%. And I actually don't disagree with you. I do think that we were... I, for, for all intents and purposes, we were kind of a niche show. You know, we, we, uh. And it wasn't fitting into what networks were doing. No. You, you guys were ahead of your, just barely, but you were ahead of your time for that kind of programming. Cause if you came out now, it would be blockbusters, right? I don't be- know though, because, I, because I, the numbers are so bad now. No, but I'm saying the, the, the culture that's out there right now, cause there's so many. Maybe. Geek, uh, the comic book stuff, uh, geek related programming. Yeah. Things like that everywhere that they all do well in their respective, uh, you know, fashions and networks yeah. that they're on. You guys were ahead of the time before that trend, and just barely because while you were on, then Big Bang Theory came on, yeah. I think a couple years into yep. your run. Yep. So you were kind of the first program there to get this ball rolling with this whole explosion for the geek and nerd genre. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I, I wonder if... As far as network goes, I'll even say, because yeah. I'm, I'm sure there was stuff, uh, you know, Sci-Fi Network had stuff going yeah. on and whatever, but to get it to 
everybody that wasn't experiencing this kind of stuff, Chuck was, I, I, at least in my opinion, I think was the forerunner to get this ball rolling. Well, I definitely think we were certainly, one could make the argument that we were right there in the beginnings, but I, I would, I would probably argue that we were one of many different shows, including Big Bang, because I'm, I, now that I'm thinking about it, I wonder if Big Bang came out right at the same time. I feel like perhaps they I think did. They're in their seventh season now or something like that. Yeah, but, but I we, I think you guys had, I think we might have had, had an edge on it. We might have had a slight edge on it. I think yeah. you had one, maybe two seasons. We might have, we might have, but at, ultimately, whether we were the first show to do it or one of the first, we definitely, were a very unique. We were we were we were uniquely placed in kind of the time of television. We were uniquely placed um, in the genre that we were. No, I mean it's our. We were such a multi. Like we were a cornucopia of genres. Mm-hmm. It was an action dramedy. So it was action drama, comedy with also like mythology and mystery and it it was crazy, you know. But but was what was so awesome about it was that it was an hour of television that. I more often than not, like the coolest compliment I, I I could get, and I would get it more than most things about the show, which was entire families would sit down and watch it together. Like it wasn't like this wasn't the show the kids like to watch. It wasn't the show the adults like to watch or whatever. It was everybody. And in a culture now where family time seems like fewer and far between. Right. Everybody appreciated that. It was like it was prime you know, time on a Monday night. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and in the way that people used to gather around a radio and listen to a radio program, a whole family, or like, or or even television. You know, when it kind of first started, but now it's just it's there's so much. It's like we're inundated with so many options. There's so much content. You know, kids will you know fuck off and go play video games or or YouTube or whatever, and not really watch anything that's on TV because they don't relate to what their parents want to watch. But Chuck was something that they all like. I can't even tell you how many people, how many, how many times kids or adults or even like grandparents would say, Oh, I, I watched it with my whole family. We all just sit and watch it. And cause we pushed the envelope, but just, but not so much that kids couldn't still watch it without parents feeling like they were exposing their kids to something right. they shouldn't be watching. You know, I want to, I want to point out at least for me, the impact Chuck had on, on my life. Yeah. I cannot hear a rush song or see centipede <laughs> in an old arcade without thinking of Chuck. That's fantastic. And whenever that song is on the radio, all I can picture is that's how you beat asteroids to get to that code. Yeah. 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 Chuck. yeah Miss- Missile command. <laughs> yeah. Missile command. Yeah. 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 Oh dude, it was all the references that we had in the show. I mean, the writers did a really good job of bringing so much pop culture into it and I mean, you know and, that, and, and that great episode, guest stars we had great that episode alone tied the old fashioned old school kind of nerdiness yeah yeah rush is more of like a dungeons and dragons oh, kind totally. of nerdiest totally. and then you're bringing it in with centipede which again old school nerdiness with the arcade into a show now which is doing the new nerdy you you bridge the gap with yeah. that one episode yeah dude there there was a lot of a lot of really quirky silly fun stuff that we got to do and the show had so much heart i think just people like could relate to that and they just you know and it could get zany and people just like going on these fun adventures and missions with us every week well let's talk about where it's led you to now yeah. Uh, to now to uh, Heroes Reborn yeah. on NBC. Uh, for those aren't familiar, Heroes, uh, I think had a three or four season run. A four, four, four seasons, season yeah. run. Um, I'll be honest, I think I wasn't around for the fourth season, like yeah. a lot of people, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I did catch up, uh, as this was coming around to see about Claire Bennett's death and, yeah. and what have you there. Oh, there's so many things to go with this because I want to talk about because uh, I was at Comic Con, yeah, uh, seeing the display there and all that. We'll go there first. So there okay. was a big display right outside of Comic Con, yeah, massive, um, right by the railroad tracks across yeah. from the Hard Rock. There, yeah. uh, so much going on there, and uh, I was amazed at the reaction. People going over there, taking photos, trying to get every you know free thing they were handing out and what yeah. have you, because Heroes started off so strong. And then by the end of the second season, going into the last two seasons, it kind of petered off. And I don't know if it was because they were moving it around in its time slot, if it was just a generational shift that happened right there, where people were starting to not follow the story anymore. I, you know, I think. I mean, God, I, I you know, there, I, I'm sure there's so many different opinions about what happened or what could have happened or should have happened or whatever. I, I think that unfortunately. When you have, so, I mean, nothing had been as big on television as Heroes when right. it premiered. Like it was so that first season was so massive. And they it did launched an, so many people, so too. many people, and it, and you know they had an international press tour, like, 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 like film status, like going around and doing multiple premieres in different countries around the world. Like that was 
Massive. I've never seen that happen before, and I haven't seen it happen since. But as with any kind of success, following up that success is just a really difficult thing to do. And you have so many cooks in the kitchen. You have executives from the studio and the network and all the producers and um, and all the different international markets, and everybody's weighing in and saying, oh, wouldn't it be cool if this? And wouldn't it be cool if that? And well, you know, we should do this, and we should do that. And we got to keep this thing going. It's like a tentpole for NBC. I don't know. I think sometimes you can, you can, you, your your head just gets spun, and and you you kind of lose track of where you started. And but uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, Heroes is one of so many IPs that this has happened to. Right. You know, Matrix is to me something that that happened to. I loved the first Matrix movie, and I thought the second and third had some really cool stuff in them, but, but they never really yeah. got back to the heart of what the first Same one was about. Lost. Oh, well, Lost, yeah, Lost was Lost. Lost I mean, became an appointment viewing thing where yeah. everybody was addicted to watching it, uh, getting anxiety, yeah. and then getting angry at the end going, what the fuck happened? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I just see, now I yeah. gotta wait till next week. Yeah. And they couldn't fully bring it no, back around again no. like that. Yeah, it, that, that show broke my heart. I mean, I there were still so many great things in it. Great performances, some really great episodes, but yeah, ultimately, at the end of the day, for it to not come full circle and right. make any sense or pay off the things that it kept presenting was really a bummer. It was really, really a bummer. Um, and you know, and I think they they were trying with heroes. Uh, it's not lost on anybody. I mean, Tim's aware, the producers are aware, the cast is aware, the network's aware that it started in one place and it ended in another. And I think that certainly with Heroes Reborn, they're trying to recapture some of the magic they had the first season. Were you surprised when they announced this? Because I was. I was like, wow, they're really giving this franchise another shot because you never really see that. Like, unless it's a movie franchise and you're trying like. Uh, let's say Sony and Fox. Yeah. They're trying not to lose the Marvel rights that right. they have, so right. they'll reboot Spider Man and Fantastic Four a million times just to keep the yeah. rights. Not really caring what the fan base is thinking of it. They're looking at it as a business end. On television, that doesn't usually happen. You yeah. never get a resurgence, especially so far past the time of the original series, to bring back another uh, edition of that series, yeah. that franchise. No, it is, it is surprising. I, and, I, and again, I don't know. My guess, <clears throat> you know, if I was a guessing man, and I and I do guess often, <laughs> I my guess would be, look, television's nuts, man. It's hard. It's it's hard to, it's hard to stake a claim anywhere uh, with a new show. There's so many options, and I would guess that maybe. NBC in trying to figure out, well, how do we, what's a way that we could start a show now that already has a built in audience? Right. And you either, and in order to do that, you're either using an existing IP that's a book, uh, basing it off a movie, you know, all that stuff all happens. And maybe, and for this one, they thought, well, look, you know, Heroes was really massive. It was, you know, the biggest at one point. And it kind of petered off. It's been five years. That seems like it's, it's sat long enough. And it's one of the, the franchises that they have, or anybody has, that makes sense to bring it back because superheroes have never been hotter Ever. In, in anything Ever. to do with our culture. Totally. And and at that kind of a world, you can kind of go anywhere with, right? So it's not like you have to pick up and... In in a similar fashion, or uh, like you're at a loss for story, like you can, like in this case, the show picks up five years. You know, just like in real life, or kind of mirroring real life, it picks up five years after the end of the original series right. when uh, Claire, you know, basically exposes her power to the world right and now we pick up five years into the world now knowing there are people evos people with abilities um and you're a bad guy in this one right is, i mean because that, that's the impression i was getting off yeah, the trailer. yeah essentially i mean are I, you filling in like the zachary quinto role like that kind of persona are you kind of filling that little niche in the show mm. I don't want to say. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say anything because I don't want to spoil anything. No, no, okay. Um, but you know, definitely. Look, you know, if you're watching, when you watch a premiere tonight, uh, anybody out there who's wa who's listening tonight um, at eight p.m. tonight two at eight p.m. Premiere two hour on premiere on NBC. Yeah, seven central. Um, and also, by the way, if you if you still have more hankering to see my ugly mug on television, Geeks Who Drink is on Sci Fi at eleven. That's the other show that I'm doing right now. Also but, part of NBC. Oh yeah, all sci fi's yeah. yeah, part of the yeah, the, the, the Comcast Universal uh umbrella. You'll see that there are very clear good guys and there are pretty clear bad guys. I guess I would fall into that category. But I would also say that there's a lot of shades of gray in the show. Okay. And any good bad guy worth his 
wait, I think they don't think they're bad. They fully believe in whatever they're doing. I think it is the right thing to do. So you'll see a lot of, you know, not, not everything is as it seems. And as the series progresses, it'll get even more gray, I think. Uh, a lot of new characters in the show, uh, for Reborn. Yeah, also mostly some, new. Some returning characters in there. Uh, Noah Bennett, who was Claire's dad. Yep, is, HRG. Is in there. Mm-hmm. But then I guess they're guest roles for, cause Hero's coming back. Yes, yeah, Sendel. And, uh, Matt Parkman. Yeah, uh, uh, Sendel comes back. Greg Grumberg comes back. Mossy comes back. Uh, Jimmy Jean Louis comes back. Are they uh, just the appearances or are they? Nah, they're, they're, I would say they're more than cameos. Okay. I mean, some of them, they're all slightly different, but you know, there's some multiple episode arcs and all that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Heroes Reborn, the two hour premiere is tonight at 8 p.m. on NBC. Then it's, uh, Thursday's 8 p.m. on NBC. Mm-hmm. Going forward. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so please check that out. Uh, especially if you were fan, look, give it an honest shot because if you were fans of heroes and, and maybe you were one of those people that didn't like the way it, it went, give this a shot because they're trying to redeem, uh, the franchise. They're taking it in a new direction, which I think is making a lot of sense. And it's never been hotter to, uh, time to bring back superhero characters, especially totally. in this universe. I think it'll do well. Uh, before we go out, get out of here, I want to talk to you about, uh, San Diego Comic Con and your other company, the Nerd Machine. Yeah. Um, I was out at San Diego and I was at a party. Um, you guys were, ho- uh, Sponsoring a party. I don't know if, was it for, was it for Loot Crate or was it for, uh, Robot Chicken or something? You guys were the, uh, the host for one of the parties out there? Uh, well, we have our own party called the Nerd Party. Um, we have, we have parties basically every night. So Thursday night we have a big, um, open to the public, just fan party. Welcome to Comic Con party. Friday night is our, private uh sponsor party but that's all the sponsors that we have at nerd hq the event that we put on right. for the whole weekend uh and nerd hq is basically you know we get a venue we we pack it full of tech and games uh we have a merch booth set up and then we also have panels uh celebrity signing celebrity yeah, you photos everywhere all for charity all that stuff and you know and then it's all you know it was it started i mean we started it to be like well how do we have brand presence at comic-con for nerd machine how do we sell merch um and and then, you know, I just kind of believe that if you give people a bunch of really cool opportunities and free stuff, that then they can go, oh, you know what? We dig you. Thank you for taking care of us. We want to take care of you. We like your brand. We want to buy a T-shirt, you know. Um, but part of that is also just throwing parties every night because I like a good dance party. And <laughs> uh, so Friday night, I think, you know, Loot Crate was definitely a, had a partnership with us. So yeah, because uh, one of the uh, the crates that came I think it was in June. Had Nerd Machine had, stuff uh, in it. Had Nerd Machine in there. Yeah. Had stickers and a couple other things in yeah. there, which is really cool. Yeah. And all the guys at Robot Chicken are really dear friends. Uh, Seth and Matt, they, they've come and done uh, panels with us every year, raised lots of money for charity. Um, so yeah, p- Friday night probably was, might have been the party that you came to. It's just a yeah, shit think, ton of fun. I think that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, just dancing and drinking and having well, a I just want to say time. it was a really cool time and I Thanks, was glad man. to see the, uh, when I found out about your company and everything, I was like, wow, this is, that he's tied into this. I'm like, that's really cool because it's man. not just walking the line of, oh, I'm into geek stuff. You're actually doing something oh, about man. it and yeah. you're actually putting something out there. I mean, I grew up, I grew up my whole life a nerd. I mean, you know, in the very stereo, I, I, part of what Nerd Machine is about is trying to change people's definition or, or help people to understand that, you know, we're all nerds. We, we, it, nerdy just means passionate. What are you nerdy about? Are you, right. you, you, you can be a fashion nerd or a fucking, you know, a gym nerd. Um, you're a, work, a workout nerd. You can be a car nerd. You can be a sports nerd. You can be a video game nerd or a comic book nerd, which are tend to be more stereotypical. But my whole life, I grew up reading comic books and playing video games and doing theater. Right, right. Like, I don't know that you get nerdier than that. So me becoming an adult and then, you know, p- then playing Chuck, uh, exposed me in the entertainment world to Comic Con for the first time. Like I always knew about Comic Con. I was always wanted to go down, but I wasn't a big cosplayer and I don't really collect toys. That's not what I'm nerdy about. Right. So I was like, oh, I guess I don't really need to go down to so Comic Con. So your desk is not full of Funko Pop. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Although good on them. Man. That, that, that's a, that's a fun little movement they got going. It's amazing. Yeah. I've, I've spent, I'm not even going to say, but lots of money. <laughs> lots of money. To Funko At and least $10. Good guys, yes. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe you'll have a deal for your, uh, your hero character. I'll be somewhere awesome. Somewhere down the line. That'll be awesome. Uh, Heroes Reborn, Thursdays, 8 p.m. on NBC. Yep. Zachary Levi, thank you so much. Also, check out thenerdmachine.com. Yep. Check out the website. You got an, uh, you have a cool app up there that yep. people can download for the phone. Podcast stuff, videos, clothing, all this yeah. kind of cool yeah. shit. Check everything out. I have so much stuff I want to ask you, but we ran out of time. All good. Next thing. time. But next time you come back. Next here, time. And I'm moving to New York in 
December, I'm doing a Broadway show. I'm doing She Loves Me for the Roundabout, so I'll be here. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I'll come back that's in. actually not that far from here. No, no. American Airlines Theater. Right. Yeah. All right, Zach, thank you so much. Uh, also, if you want to send some love, Zachary Levi on both Twitter and Instagram. Add and Zachary tell him what Levi. you think yeah. about uh, yeah, Heroes yeah. and everything else going on. Thank you so much, man. I can't wait to see you next time. So appreciate it. Yeah. Oops, you know what the music means. Our time is up. Yes, our time is up. Thanks to uh, Zachary Levi, to Elizabeth Rodriguez, and to Bob Gale yeah, from Back man. to the Future. Really exciting show today. It was a good show. And thank you for Matt for making it in uh, and uh, surviving the treacherous weather outside. No hurricane could keep me away. <laughs> That's we got to get. Know, man. <laughs> we, were, we were worried you were trapped in the tunnel while it's filling with water. <laughs> we got to get like out of here. Uh, let's go around the room for the plugs, Matt. Uh, BigCavsGeekStuff.com every Thursday for the new podcast. And if you're going to be at New York Comic Con, swing by booth 129. We'll be there all weekend hanging out. And uh, it's going to be a good time. All right. And uh, yeah, the, the show, it's Eric Nagel, will be down there doing all these interviews yep. and what have you. Uh, won't be airing next week. It'll be airing the week after. Right. And we'll be here with all the Comic Con stuff and everything that was going on with that. Doing a crossover show with Big Kev's Geek stuff. Yeah. We'll be here. And Lisa will be here, I think, as well. For yes. that, Gittles, what do you got? Uh, Gittle base on the Twitter and Instagram, and also going to uh, plug Sweet Chick and uh, Butters and Sto- uh, Scotch uh, restaurants in Brooklyn. Okay, from uh, Roland's Food Court. All right, anything for you though? Any kind of takedown? No, we man. know you won the lobster one. I, yeah, I got first place in the lobster takedown. I, I don't have any takedowns coming up right now. I'm on a takedown hiatus. All right, nice. Lisa. Uh, Pat and Oswald tomorrow at Foxwoods in Connecticut. I'm going to open those shows. There's still some tickets left. Also, Monday, I'm at QED in Astoria for Cartoon Dump with Frank Conniff. We're going to have to get Frank on the show and talk about uh, Mystery Science Theater. Oh, all my yeah. God, yes. It'll be so awesome. A um, couple of people I want to thank. I was down in Florida uh, this past week here doing a, a new project that I'll reveal soon. But I got to do a lot of uh, cool radio stuff down in Tampa and Orlando. I want to thank everybody at the Mike Calta Show. Uh, 1025 The Bone in Tampa there. Mike Calta, Spanish Gavin. Carmen and Ryan Hoppy, uh, Drew Garabo, who's also there, did some stuff with me. Thank you for that. In Orlando, Russ Rollins and Carlos Nevada from Monsters in the Morning, WTKS there. Thank you for them. And also Royce and Marie from uh, More Like Radio. Nice. For uh, their hospitality and everything there. Oh, Sam. Uh, that's one there. Hi, Sam. You're a radio fan, right? Yeah. I just heard, have you heard Mike Francesa talking about cork? No. Oh, it's a gift from God. <laughs> Is that coming up on your it's, show? Yeah, it's incredible. All right. I did see all the Francesicon stuff. Yeah, I didn't see Francesicon this year. He does not know how to play to a crowd. No, of course. No, he just sits there and he just goes, you're all nuts. They're all gathered <laughs> to make fun of him. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and he shows up like, you know, Elvis walked into the building. That's but the he, con. But he's there, yeah, he's, he did like five minutes on cork. All right. That MLB is selling, and it's the greatest thing. Is I've this ever the heard. new snowblower? <laughs> it's, you no, know, it's, you know, because he's disgusted by it. Okay. <laughs> Which is when he's at his best. Okay. Yeah. So ch- check out that on the Sam Roberts show coming up next. Unless it's Saturday, then uh, I think Dr. Steve is on with Weird Medicine after that. Sure. Of course, on demand and uh, all that stuff, social media. It's Eric Nagel on Twitter, uh, Facebook, YouTube. And E-Rock Radio on Instagram, etc. I think we covered sure. everything, right? I think so. All right. So uh, yeah. New York Comic Con next week. We'll be back in two weeks. Until then, next time, be seeing you. And that's all the time we have. Follow the guys on Twitter and Instagram at E-Rock Radio and at Geek Stuff OG. At E-Rock Radio and at Geek Stuff OG. The show should be back next week. Right here on OP Radio.